sorry, Your Honor. Flattery makes all the difference, just so you know. We did the, uh, the title, right? I'm so sorry. I, don't, I didn't think we agreed to these. I thought we just made a list for discussion at the, after the public. Public notice is hereby given that the tentative budget for the Village of New Paltz for the fiscal year beginning on June 1st, 2015. The draft budget is available for review in the office of the Village Clerk at the Village of New Paltz at uh, Hall, 25 Platteville Avenue, New Paltz, New York, where it is available for inspection by any interested person during the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the office of the Village Clerk beginning on March 20th, 2013. The Board of Trustees of the Village of New Paltz will conduct a public hearing on the tentative budget on April 10th, 2013 at 7.30 at the Village Hall, showing changes, alterations, and revisions as may have been made by the Board of Trustees. At such public hearing, any person may be heard in favor or against the tentative budget as compiled and for or against any of their uh, any items therein contained. The following salaries are proposed to be paid to each member of the Board of Trustees, the Mayor, 48,000, Deputy Mayor, 8,200, the three trustees each, $7,200. The Village of New Paltz will make every effort to assure that the hearing is accessible to persons with disabilities, Anyone requiring special assistance and or reasonable accommodation should contact the village clerk. Uh, should contact the village clerk. Thank you, Katie. As who's uh, anyone here to speak uh, to the budget? No questions about the budget at all. Don, yes, yeah, please. I'm in the back of the corner. The microphone over here for Channel 23, which is a great thing. Channel 23, <laughs> our local public access station. Um, I recall uh, being here, uh, I guess it was the last meeting, one of the last meetings, and the proposed budget that was put in front of the, the board had a 1.5% uh, decrease in the tax levy. Just, yeah, 1% decrease. One, I, I know it was a decrease. That, yeah, was, that was the thing that resonated with, that's the thing I, I recall. And I, um, I did not get to attend the, the last meeting, so if I'm wrong on my, my facts here, I, I apologize. Um, it was my understanding that uh, a number of uh, funds were put into the budget for the purposes of consolidation uh, consultants and cons studies of consolidation. And um, I know that very early on and at every step along during the process, the, the public was assured that the state would pay for consolidation studies. Um, you know, and, and I think there might be some sort of a thing where if you do a good job and if you meet certain criteria, we'll reimburse you. But we're having to put the money out, as I understand it, and and you all promised us that wouldn't be the case. So I just wanted to, you know, I would prefer to have a, a tax decrease, and I prefer not to be paying for another uh, another study of consolidation, which you know, I, I we have spent a fair amount of the state's money already and a lot of our time. I, it just seems like at some point there have been so many assurances and so many so many promises and so many numbers put out and things and, and they, they all at some point become withdrawn or retracted or modified and this seems just to be another one and uh, I'd, I'd rather have the tax decrease. It's just my personal opinion. Thanks Tom. Anyone else? No one? Uh, Roddy, we're uh, doing the public, are you here for the budget public hearing or for another? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, if you have something to talk about the budget, now's the, now's the time. You don't have to. I'm just offering. No. Okay, just check. Aaron. Is there still, have you guys made any substantive changes that is still at a 1% decrease? What, what happens is once, the, when the tentative is presented, um, once we set the public hearing, we can't make changes. So what we did at our last meeting was discuss the changes people would like to see. So after the public hearing, we can take that and wherever the public comments are and have kind of a one discussion next ones at our meeting. So next week is when we're going to decide whether there's other adjustments that need, need to be made. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there is a list uh, of, I mean, you can get it from the minutes, I mean, of the list of the things people were, were talk, talking about. And there were some that need a little bit, bit more research. So there are things like that, but they're still pulling in some numbers to see if it's worth the investment. Any other uh, comments? Mr. Rocco. Hi. My name is Tom Rocco. I'm a resident of the village. Um, there were just two small matters, maybe. I can't help but notice that the uh, salary of the mayor is uh, projected for a significant increase, and I, I wonder on uh, what basis that uh, decision might be made. 
and I noticed that the uh, fire uh, service is uh, slated for a slight decrease, and I uh, am concerned that uh, the fire the firemen get everything they need to uh, serve the village as uh, they have in the past. Thanks. Uh, yeah, though two. It's actually two fairly simple answers. Um, the 48 is not um, based on anything other than the fact that for the past 10 years, I thought that's what a fair salary for the job should be. So whenever it comes up, uh, it's, that's it, where I start the conversation. So you can't ever hurt to talk about it, especially given consolidation and the supervisor's uh, salary change. So I put it in there for the conversation, and surprisingly, we came out with a 1% decrease. So it might actually be worthwhile. And But we'll see what happens next Wednesday. Um, as for the fire, um, that was because... Um, as I think I explained this at our last meeting. What uh, I did this year with the fire department budget was um, simply got the spreadsheet from them that they use to track their spending. They enter in every voucher and what it's for because their, their budget is broken up in a more fine-grained manner than the other departments. So they keep track pretty close track. So all I did was look at what they compared the actual expenditures to the budgeted. And I did that for 2011-12. So we actually we have the, the solid numbers for that this year closed out. Um, I did it the same for the one we're in, the 2012-13 fiscal year, and but that obviously was a kind of a year to date, sure. and you can compare it to where we're at in the budget year and that kind of thing. Um, and then I just compared to the 2014 um, initial request from the fire department. So it just it was just matching them up. So we went through and if they if they spent uh, you know if we've been budgeting four thousand dollars a year for X Y Z and they've been spending 3,500, you know, just knock 500 off of that and then it's fine. I went through it line by line with the chief um, and there are gonna be some adjustments um, I'm gonna be bringing to the board next week. Nothing huge, but um, uh, certain things, there was one thing where we hadn't spent any money on, on uh, certain testing of the equipment for the last two years, even though it had been budgeted because it, it had been done. So we're gonna restart something that had slipped through the cracks. So things like that, we got tweaked a little bit, but overall, the reduction in the fire department budget was, I believe, about eighty-four thousand um, dollars over what was uh, um, requested. So the chief is is fine with most of that. We're going to adjust some of them based on on uh, new information. Uh, and just so you know, that's actually something that we did last year with all the other departments as well. So this isn't something we can do every year. I mean, we'll track it, but there aren't going to be major changes after this because we we just cut things very close to where we're actually spending the money. So. Uh, it means we're, we have more focus, more, I guess, I guess it would be transparency in um, making sure that when we do need to budget for, for padding or for emergencies or unforeseen things, it's in a de designated contingency fund or whatnot. So in that same budget, um, while we removed $84,000 um, of money that was, we didn't need, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we also, or I also added in um, $50,000 uh, specifically earmarked to go uh, as a, um, a deposit into the equipment reserve fund. So that's some, and that's a, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit backwards with this. We needed to do that because in the past what we've, what has happened is any money left over in the fire department budget um, is not rolled over um, into, any, into the reserve fund. It's specifically earmarked for the fire equipment reserve. Because it's joint town village, it's easier to kind of keep that money sequestered rather than go back. Now, because of the kind of the tighter rein on the line item spending, we're not having, we don't have a big buffer every year to go into the reserve fund. So we decided to, instead of having it be random based on, on the spending that year, have it be predictable. So we know exactly what's going in year after year and we can adjust it up or down as equipment needs arise. Is that clear? I know it kind of rambled on a little bit. Well, I, I really appreciate the, the need for contingency or reserve funds. And I understand uh, not, uh, not uh, doing, not, not rolling it into the general fund if it's unexpended, mm -hmm. you know, for this particular purpose. So, um, and I don't have enough time to look into it very much more carefully yeah. than that. So, I think I understand what your point is. So thank you. And just to, just to be very very clear on the, the one overarching point you raised is that. Um, the chief, and I think I can speak for him, you can ask him yourself, um, but the chief and I met and, and he was comfortable that we have the resources to, to meet the department's needs with, with the budget, um, with the adjustments that I'll be bringing to the table next week. Okay, thank you very sure. much. Anyone else here for the budget? 
We have our treasurer in the room if you want to ask an incredibly complicated financial question. No? All right, then I guess the only decision is do we want to keep the public hearing open or close it? Well, I mean, it doesn't change. Close. Move to close? Yep. Uh, well, okay. Is it someone want to second that? I'll second it. Okay. Um, the, one, the one con I can think of to that is that is to wonder whether it makes a difference to our actions. I mean, next week we'll talk about these the adjustments and everything else. Um, is it, does it matter to the, I mean, does it the public? Yeah. We had said we would do budget discussion tonight. We can, I mean, yeah, that's fine too. I just assumed there would be more comment from the public that we'd have to look into. But um, and the public right. can still come in next week and you know. That's true. Comment that's on true it. too. Yeah. And influence. Us. Yeah. So. Right. All right. So, uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. All right. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all for coming out for that one. Uh, Katie, would you read? Uh, actually, what are we doing with this? Since there was the snafu with the northern North Chestnut, the B three, we, we, there's no public hearing to have. Yeah. There's no public hearing to have. It's it's a misunderstanding on the behalf of the clerk's department, and we're okay. very sorry. All right, so we're going to be we'll be talking about that very shortly. Uh, not tonight, but we'll we'll have that back on the agenda very, as quickly as we can. Uh, so it'll be the uh, public hearing number three on the agenda. You might tell the public why we're taking it off. Actually, I just found out about this as I walked in. Is it, uh, uh, Kurt or Ariana have a yeah, brief I was, explanation? I was looking at, um, I, I couldn't remember us setting the public hearing on the B3 rezoning. So I went to our 27th, March 27th minutes, and then our March 20th minutes, and then our March 13th minutes, and on March 13th it said that um, no action was taken, and that was the last time it was on an agenda, um, which explained that I was not crazy, and I didn't just not remember us not setting it, um, and I you know, had things that I wanted to add to it and things that I would like to change. So I called Kurt, and uh, he confirmed that he that was the last thing he remembered, and that was the meeting he was at, um, which the minutes indicated. So uh, I just brought it up to all of you and said, we're not going to have a public hearing. Um, it's my apology, as I did the minutes for the 27th, and as everyone knows, I rewatched the video, um, doing the doing the minutes on the watching the video on the 28th when everyone said and the public hearing set for the 10th. I thought perhaps I'd missed something, and I set the pub with the proper time to set a public hearing, right. making sure that because everyone said it and agreed to it as if it, and it's my fault for not going back and checking the minutes and I am truly deeply sorry. Well, apparently we were all under the wrong impression yeah. as well. I, I am truly deeply sorry for any inconvenience. Oh no, it's not, it's not, it's not, we all kind of, we all kind of slipped on this one, that's all. Um, all right, so, but number, uh, moving on to number three. Uh, and thank you, Ariana, for the explanation. Um, Katie, were you reading announcement? I don't know that we have to since it's a, Oh, is it continued? Continu uh, the rest of them are continued. Oh, you're right. They are. Yeah. Is anyone here to speak to uh, the local law regarding parking requirements um, to be used by the village planning board? No? Okay, then I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Did you want to, uh, oh, is that the one you want to speak to, Peter? Please. Yeah, the minimum yeah. residential off street parking requirements. Yes. Oh, residential? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, okay. that's what this hearing is about. Okay. Um, last meeting, we made some comments, and um, the, we hope the comments were being taken into consideration. So we'd like to see a copy of the modification of that law with respect to those comments. And if there was no modification, we'd like to know it also. I really just don't want it to hold on before we have a chance to comment again in a public hearing on the changes mm -hmm. we were um, the issues we mentioned at that time. Well, the board hasn't discussed it much far, further, so mm -hmm. we'll see. Well, we do have an answer from our attorney on the question that was raised. Right. And, and it says, during your previous <coughs> meeting, a question was raised as to the effect the adoption of new laws would have on pending applications, mm -hmm. and that was the, the question raised. The law is that new law or code provisions take effect as they are intended to on the face of the law, and that the new law applies to owners and applicants at the time, regardless of whether a project review or even the project itself was commenced under the previous law. And that was the question. If something was going through process, mm -hmm. 
and this new law was enacted, would the old law be applicable or would the new law be applicable? In New York, you are only entitled or required to abide by the previous law if your project was actually approved while the old law was in effect or you have commenced substantial construction or made substantial investment in the approved project. From our discussion at the last meeting, the project that the question was directed to has not been approved. So the old law would not take effect. No, but the, the old law would not be in effect for that project. It would be oh, because it's not a right. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say is we did receive a letter. Yes. That, that it was received this morning. Requesting that it be read during the hearing. Yes. Um, well, we usually just accept written comments without reciting them. Is that what would the board like to do with that? Well, we, I believe, tabled the hearing or kept it open in order that a letter which was delivered could be read into the text. Now, is that true? Yeah. So I don't know what you want to do. But well, how long? It'll take a while to read that. It just seems strange to recite it to a crowd of people who are waiting to talk when that this person isn't here. Yeah, I mean that's what we usually do. I'm, I'm, it's just a matter of etiquette, I guess. I don't know that the board. Continues. I think, for the most part, the letter addresses what Peter just asked, and I read from the attorney. So I think we. I did not promise the, the author that I would read it because I would not have presumed the will of the board. Um, and they were aware that I did email it to everyone within minutes of receiving it this okay, morning. Well, I would like to move that it be entered into the public record as part of the hearing. That's certainly. Um, could we just know uh, who sent it and what, the, what, the, what, it, what it is about? You want to give the gist, son? Well, okay. I mean, even if it is you don't written by Greg Burton. <laughs> And I believe he was at our last meeting. I may be incorrect in that. Um, I understand the need to amend the parking code in the village because of limited space, but gutting all of the requirements for non-residential off-street parking use should not be the answer. You can make changes to the existing code. Um, that might be, that is the gist, I think. Yeah. yeah. There's also an important segment in there about the uh, eliminating the 400 foot provision of finding uh, public parking space within 400 feet of the project. And that's being stricken under the new law. And that's also, I think it's a significant addition. Any other comments? Well, this, um, I hate to put you on the spot, Kurt, yes. but did you have an opportunity to read the letter? Yes. Um, and do you wish to? Sure. I, I not only have I had a chance to, to read it, but I've also um, had um, uh, two opportunities to meet with Greg Burton, um, who explained very clearly his concerns. And um, uh, let's see now. What? Here, I have a letter. Thanks. So he and I have discussed some of these things at length. One was the question that, um, while it was not available last Wednesday night, um, I understand the question came up, and, and you mentioned that Village Council had had, um, had answered that question. Um, I think that um, Greg is extremely astute and thorough in, in, in composing this letter for the village board. And um, there, there's a general policy question behind this change, whether we wish to liberalize our parking standards or remain strictly, uh, remain strict with regard to the provision of off-street parking. Um, 400 feet, it's hard for me to recall a time when it was thought that people would not be willing to walk more than 400 feet from where they parked to the destination. Um, and the, that is not um, a current standard. However, the fact that other communities have accepted that as, a, as that the standard might be more like a quarter of a mile, um, that does not mean that we cannot remain relatively conservative in how we in how we require off street parking. But what we've seen are um, applications where they're they're modest 
um, that they're, they're relative, they're existing buildings, they're, um, they're smaller applications, and they've been, the, there's been a threat um, that exists by way of the code, that if they couldn't provide a certain number, sometimes not very many, but a certain number of dedicated off-street parking spaces, that, um, that the project really wouldn't be able to move forward. And this includes even filling spaces in Water Street Market and things like that. So what, what is proposed here by the Planning Board, and, and I endorse it myself, is a liberalization of, of parking. Now, I think it'll work well in conjunction with the other parking initiative that the Village Board has been discussing regarding parking regulations and um, uh, prospective um, permits for residents. So in order to um, uh, have them not find themselves in catch-22s in terms of parking. Um, so I think it'll work well in conjunction with that, but I want to be clear that it is, it is um, freeing the planning board of some of, these, of some of these constraints that have affected some of our smaller applications. And it is based upon the notion that people would um, walk more than, than, than 400 feet, to be sure. What, what's the kind of picture of 400 feet is? Uh, well, uh, let's say it's, it's like walking from home plate to center field in a, in a major league baseball stadium. <laughs> Something I've never done, Chuck. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Feet well, feet people like to use football dash. fields. Yeah. That, that's 300 feet, right. 100 yeah. yards. Um, uh, well, let's put it this way. I, I had measured, for example, um, I, I maintain that, um, that hopefully soon we'll have wayfinding signs from our own, <coughs> this very property, that the village metered parking here, and even unmetered parking that surrounds these, these two buildings, that they would be that people will be pointed in this direction, especially those who are not just from the immediate surroundings driving in, but rather driving from, from points south, east, west, and north to visit New Falls. So they, would be, they might be pointed to the approximately 115 parking spaces that exist on this site, which are no longer encumbered by the, um, uh, the police headquarters. And um, so there's a lot of spaces, and of course you can almost see the most prominent intersection at Main Street and Plattic Hill in front, from this uh, area, so uh, and it's actually about, I believe it's about um, 1,100 feet from some of the spaces on this property to that to that intersection. Main Street. Yeah, and then of course um, from there, um, as as we've all seen, um, folks continue to walk here and there within the village, um, down the street, looking to see what's down there, and, and and covering a lot of territory. So I think I think I'm acknowledging, and the planning board is acknowledging what people do already when they when they come here um, and I think it'll work well in conjunction when adopted with the the other parking initiative um, regarding um, spaces and, and so but make no mistake it is a change in, in policy and I well, think the, well just to play devil's advocate because yes. I like this law um, the there was a, once a Robert Chamberlain who's a traffic engineer who worked with us years ago on the transportation and land use plan massive you know Thing if you were there, it was, it was fun. But he, we were talking about parking then, and, and we did a little, sh a little study of, of um, parking in downtown because there's obviously the constant, well, I can't find parking, I can't find parking. What, what Bob kind of figured out is, well, yeah, that's true, maybe a couple times during the day, but mostly there's plenty of parking, but it's not right in front of where you want to go. So what, what people tend to say is that I, I can't, when I can't find parking, often it's, well, I can't park right in front of the store I want. Now, how do you, because that's, so, okay, if you take as a given that people will walk, you know, 1,000, 1,500 feet without a problem, so 400 is irrational, um, should it be a concern for us that there's also the counter, the other push the other way, that people will then try to drive up as close as you can get to where you are, so that, you know, would we create choke points, and how do you balance that out in planning? Well, sure, and actually, what, what I, Cause what I think I that, take... that's one of the comments I heard from the neighbors down by the cinema. Yes, and yeah. indeed, let, let's you know. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to pretend that there's not um, um, a nexus between um, the proposal at this time, the timing of this proposal, which originates from from something else. But the timing is coincident with the processing of Water Street Cinema as um, their site plan application. But uh, Mayor, to, to uh, answer your question, I think um, um, what we have is um, yes, you can actually also suffer from um, congestion from people circling around an area where they want to park. And that's been found to be anything but insignificant. Not that it's been studied specifically in New Paltz necessarily, but in other places where people are driving around and creating a lot of congestion and competition. And you can see that there's even some tension on, on drivers' faces as they're driving around. There again, I come back to wayfinding and how a lot of villages and small cities um, that, are visit, um, that are destinations um, do in fact um, 
uh, essentially point people in the right direction and to ample parking facilities and um, and then so that helps alleviate some of that that driving around and that, mm -hmm. that tension the drivers just one follow-up question council the um, <laughs> um i guess my the the, the that's leading question is then because obviously the people who are coming at this for the are only here because of the watching symptoms i don't think anyone has been here for without that incentive um, and I know, and so this law is an overarching law for the whole village. It's not, it's not about the Water Street Cinema. Like you said, it's coincidence more than causality. But, you know, let's be real, and this is, you know, this is why people are concerned. So, I guess, what's the, this is a law that is encompasses the whole village, and what, what protections are there in the planning process to avoid the, you know, catast catastrophic scenarios that some people are concerned about? Because I, because it's, they are two different conversations. Yes. We have the general village-wide side, uh, not sidewalk, um, parking, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, parking. And then there's the specifics of what you just mentioned. So is the, the dealing with the, the circling tension that you just described, does that conversation generally happen here with the broad laws or is it a site-by-site -site conversation that can be ameliorated? Well, I see it as, I see it wayfinding as an, a, a, a distinct initiative that would tackle that among other driving um, vehicle movement and the, the harmony between pedestrian cyclists and, and cars. Yeah. So I, I, I do see that as, as an approach. Um, um, the, the discussion with regard to Water Street Cinema will, will, will continue in front of the planning board <coughs> and they have, um, uh, with the, the ZBA application for um, a parking variance of 100%, with that having been officially withdrawn, it'll return to the planning board, but the planning board being the lead agency and the only local agency with decision power over all these features. So, uh, for example, what we did was we kept residential uses out of this. I just couldn't, I couldn't envision a way that this would work while including new residential development. That's, um, that does that seems um, in, impractical and problematic. And so, um, um, on what we have is the planning board would have the burden and, and I would assist them with that burden of making individual, um, uh, findings on each application and in, in the case of the, the Water Street Cinema we actually do have a, a large volume of, of data so far and um, and in other cases um, smaller cases where the projects are not going to be able to warrant um, um, a, a, a comprehensive traffic study um, uh, there'll, there'll be a determination made with those as guidelines but the uh, the comments are the points are well taken if this is an additional burden on the planning board to sustain these decisions they're making. And in a way, in a way too, this was, this was thought to be not necessarily a permanent solution, but the, the, the comments are still well taken because this is le proposed legislation like any other, except that um, the planning board and I have, have sometimes referred to it as an interim solution. Um, and that means that um, uh, I believe that a few, some additional surface parking, public surface parking could could also could also assist them a lot yeah. in this case. Well, to speak to wayfinding, I know. I mean, I don't know if everybody here received it, but I'm pretty sure you and I were both on the email. Uh, there was a photo sent to us of a parking sign with an arrow that was completely covered in stickers, and so you know there are things like that that. You know, it's not necessarily that we don't even have signage, it's that with better maintenance of our signage is something that we need to uh, make a priority maybe for the parking in particular. And one of the things that was brought to my attention was the idea that, I mean, this I guess was before the planning board or, it, or maybe the ZBA, um, that there's some, there's parking like on Huguenot Street that is underutilized due to lighting. Um, and that people feel that it's, you know, an only parking lot and that it's not something that is as accessible. So these are some of the things that have been, you know, the public has been talking to me about and uh, we could definitely look into those types of issues and ways to expand parking. That's right. I mean, one of the characteristics of New Paltz is that um, the, the stream, what makes us more interesting than some other communities and villages and small cities is that we are um, eclectic in many ways and in our physical form, and we're not looking for, an, for total order. Um, there are some villages that are, are, are such grid patterns and, 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 and seem to be so perfect, it's almost hard to believe they're real places and, and right. not, you know, the, uh, you know, something created by Wait, Yeah, they might like be funky and, and not <laughs> as manicured, but there's, there's lines to be drawn. Yes, yeah. I, yeah. I think that we can, in other words, even our, even our own uh, Platico lot is, 
not necessarily as recognizable, even though I'm, I know that there are signs saying, here you are, there's right. public parking, and it's centrally located, but it doesn't always have the look of public parking. Certain Absolutely things not, that are, yeah. that are not, that are not very expensive can be done to help that. And well, Ariana brought up a point with I mean, the parking plan that we have before the board with the immediate budgetary long range, we have budgeted for the signage right. and the meters and some of that, which will be implemented once the budget goes into place. So it's all sort of working together. It's tangential. Yeah. And, and again, even that is, is a little, there's a little bit of happy coincidence in, in that. Um, and of course, we're even trying to attract um, the author of a, a recent book called The Walkable City. Um, we're trying to attract the author to come here um, and, and speak about that. And now what he says will be, will definitely, um, advance community discussion. That's not to say that everyone's going to agree with them. It's, it's, it's one thing to write a book and, and come and speak about it. It's another thing to implement it <laughs> and remain in the community. You're not just visiting and speaking about your book, but you're on, you're on the job, the village board, <coughs> um, myself and others, um, uh, and DPW, DPW and, and working on this. So it's another thing to implement it, but that'll certainly stimulate um, community discussion because I don't think that our parking regulations have changed much and as far as I can tell by code. Can we still ask oh, oh, absolutely. Can I jump in real quick first? Well, I think Brian, Brian and Allison and Tom, how's that? Just going to a certain or um, What are the odds we can put together um, like a parking map on our website? Um, color code, you know, uh, free, pay, yeah. whatever, have different pay levels. And it actually came up at Town Gown this morning. Yeah. An entire parking map that the Chamber of Commerce could put out. Yeah, and then have it uh, downloaded on our website as a PDF so you could just like zap it to your smartphone. <coughs> By the way, the and that's time. actually what the college president he sa said to Mike Smith. He said uh, that sounds like a great project for geography majors to map and then computer science majors to create an app for. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're really, the it's like you were in the room. I could just be a college president. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe that, the graphics department can do the residential decals. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they could. But there's there's no doubt that that would <laughs> be really? helpful. And I think so many of the people that um, spend time in the village um, um, would be interested in that. And uh, and it also could become even the word of mouth could spread pretty well. Um, so I, I would I would suggest that's a good idea. We do have. A, uh, a map that, that was here when I came here that showed, the village had gone to the trouble to produce a map that showed by color how long you're allowed to park at certain meters and, and along that street. So, of course that's going to change. Right. Yeah. But that was good to have as, as a baseline, uh, that visual. So, and actually, it's, it's, you're absolutely right. We could create something. Yeah, electronic. Download it. Yeah. I know I'm like a good idea machine sometimes. <laughs> um, well, I like oh, I'm sorry, were you done, Brian? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, uh, maybe printed brochures as well, but maybe the Chamber of Commerce would be interested in doing that as like a tourism thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt in, in the, um, their, their show, the, um, the, the front room of the, in front of their offices right. in the Chamber, they have so many sure. brochures. I wouldn't doubt that they have those yeah. and that, that, that might name uh, businesses, individual businesses in New Paltz. Um, I really like the idea, even though it would take me longer than a lot of other people to learn the app. I really like that idea, and I think people would. Freshman latch orientation. To it. That's right, yeah. They, they, yes. Allison? I like all these ideas, and I love the idea of a walking village. My concern is maybe you addressed it um, um, for residential <coughs> districts that border um, the business district, and if there's some kind of place, I don't know, some say, I don't know, catering place or something that's right near a residential district, um, what would, will there be protections so that everybody doesn't park on that <coughs> residential street? Or might, is that? It, that's a long term in our parking plan, that's a long term. But if this goes through, then they could park on residential streets? That's a, the planning board is not planning on residential parking no, I'm not talking about residential parking. I'm talking about the business. People are going to the business, parking on the residential street because the business won't be required to have as many spaces. Well, that's true. I, I understand yeah. that the point is, of course, that yes. um, where where does um, where where do people park, and, and are we mm -hmm. encouraging? Are we even going to 
perhaps paint lines on residential streets <coughs> so people know that, yes, this is a legitimate space, are there restrictions? Um, I, it's a very valid point, of course, and especially in certain parts of the village. Um, so I think that if there are res res some restrictions on parking where appropriate, and even um, the idea of, of parking permits, I don't think that that is um, an overly ambitious project. I think that that can help. I don't know if, if, if folks, just by, by having me say that, I'm not sure that that satisfies the concern. But yeah, I do think that there's a, a strategy. And a lot of them are, are even discussed in the book that I just mentioned, um, an awful lot of different strategies. We are contemplating, as part of the parking plan, part of it's going to be implemented tonight immediately if the hearing and the board votes to do so. But one of the long-range plans is the idea of residential decals. And that would address, it's not going to happen overnight. I just would hope it would happen very soon, because once this, this goes through, then people on residential streets near the business district will be burdened by people parking on the residential streets, well, um, well, and particularly could be late at night. They're, they're burdened now, Allison, on this side of the village by students and faculty who don't want to park and all of the streets every day. Yeah, so, so that's what I don't so, want to add to. That's what so I that's what to, we're, yes. we're going to try and address that whole thing when we get to the long term, which I hope will be soon, residential parking. Because parking, I don't think parking for commercial situations is serious right now and <coughs> problems for residents parking where they live. And so many of our streets and our houses don't have driveways, don't have garages. So we have to understand that and work with what we have. And part of what we need, I think, is residential parking. And residential decals that ensure people who that they can park at their houses as they would like to do. So I hope we can address all that. But Sorry. I understand the concern. Sorry, Tom, let's get to you. Okay. Uh, there's two things I think only two. One, uh, 400 feet is a shorter distance than from this spot to the bakery, which I walked this morning. And so I, I know it's uh, more than 400 feet from here to there, if you want to measure. Secondly, the, at the last meeting, uh, you asked my, me to address the planning board's uh, requirements not to act in an arbitrary and capricious manner. The, uh, what hasn't been mentioned for some reason tonight is that the existing regulations will remain on the books as guidelines, and the planning board will be expected to use those as guidelines in making its judgments. And the planning board is not allowed to act in any capricious way. So we're not allowed to burden people who would not <coughs> otherwise be burdened unless there is an overwhelmingly positive reason for doing that. Any other comments on this particular level? Yeah, yeah please. So based on the last two conversations that we had, I may be missing something, but the guidelines that are being proposed here seems to be worsening the situation that already is a bad situation in part. Am I missing something? Or? Can you be more specific? Eliminating the barriers for one thing. I mean, that's just one example. But how? Eliminating the barriers? It seems like it's a free for all for parking. I don't want to eliminate the variance, but no. Well, the, you mean the PSG has to go for variance in order to go beyond the, the, the statute. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. In other words, yes, this, <laughs> this, would give, this would give the planning board the authority um, that it indeed would be, um, you, you wouldn't have to meet a variance standard. You'd have to meet specific standards associated with the review of your development. And again, I want to reiterate, Yes, that places a, a, a greater burden, but that's part of the planning process. Um, I, I would not, I, unless I'm asked, unless I'm directed to go in a different direction, what I am trying to do is make sure that, um, that, that we 
Well, in, in part, that the reality is that people already park and walk. Um, some of the existing businesses that that draw lots of um, drivers are, are such that they were they were opened and um, in such a way that they don't really have any offsite parking associated with them. I I don't know of um, of too many other locations where um, where where that exists or that that would be approved in, in such a way today, even with this proposed law to make regulations into guidelines. Can you give an example? Yeah, um, I think uh, if you look at um, some of the um, uh, the bars and restaurants that draw large crowds, they were simply constructed and operating and even expanded without having um, such property that allowed for um, for expanding or providing much much parking at all. Um, and I, so if we were looking at re reviewing those today and they didn't exist as they do, or they weren't in some way grandfathered, um, they, we would have very little choice. I mean, they might go to the zoning board for a variance. They'd be very unlikely to get it. Um, um, in the same way that the, um, the variance that was withdrawn on, on Water Street Cinema, that was, um, um, I think that was going to be difficult to, to justify as it was proposed. I mean, I'm prepared to, to, to be on, err on the conservative side with recommendations about off-street parking, but that's not my feeling that would serve the village the best. But I understand that there are neighborhoods immediately adjacent to the business areas, and, and uh, this is by far the most dynamic community that I've, that I've worked for, and, um, and I've tried to uh, become aware as much as I can of, uh, of contemporary parking strategies and, and thinking, and and visiting as many places that are that are similar and are competitive for parking, but yet uh, people still people still come, um, even though um, parking, like you said, you, you're not in any way going to be able to pull up, and there's not going to be valet parking as I've seen, you know, oh, no. restaurants. Or, yeah, I know. Right? I'm so well, more and more places in, in in suburban locations like malls are are offering, uh, you know. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess. That's... I have a comment that was mailed to me and asked to me, asked to be read. Um, that's on this topic. If anybody, if people don't mind, um, it's uh, by Brian Oback and uh, Mill Rock Road. Um, the goal of the village and of all municipalities should be to create walkable communities. We should strive to make walking, bike riding, and the use of public transportation easy and convenient. We should also encourage dense development in which residents and visitors have ready access to all needed and desired services and entertainment. For too long, municipalities have instead sought to make the use of cars easy and convenient. This includes parking regulations, which ensure that drivers will have ready access to parking near any establishment they wish to visit. While this is important for people with disabilities and such accommodations should also be guaranteed for this population, this is not necessary for everyone. Requiring that all businesses have substantial private parking available forces inappropriate, inappropriate, costly, and environmentally unsound land use. It discourages dense development and facilitates sprawl. It is time that we stop catering to cars and operating on the assumption that everyone needs to go everywhere via their own private automobiles. Revising current parking requirements and making them into recommendations is a good first step. This will at least provide planners with the opportunity to consider that, that which is most beneficial to the community as a whole, as opposed to imposing outdated mandates that privilege driving, that privilege driving convenience above all else. I'll send that to you. And you're going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> John? I've got several questions here. Um, we mentioned parking permits. Um, who would enforce those parking permits? Would, it, would that be the job of the police to come and, and Park, check the area? Our parking enforcement officer, we have two now. And what, what time do they finish their day? Six. Uh, six. So, so the parking permits are only good for daylight hours. Well, well that, no. we haven't developed that full I plan, understand. John. So but when we do... I understand. Let's finish here. The, the point I'm trying to make is that if you if you create a parking permit, which are great ideas, then we have to be willing to enforce those. And currently, we enforce them really well between the hours of 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. But for parking, a lot of the parking issues occur 
after 6 p.m. And so if you're going to require parking permits, and you're not going to enforce them. No, I agree. Uh, no, well, well, I, I mean, this. there's going to have to be a component of enforcement mm -hmm. along with the permit. Yeah. There's no weather. Well, there's there's just a note there. Um, I noticed in there there was removal of the word minimum in the law. Um, so the decisions then are, as I understand it, are on a case-by-case -case basis using the previous standards as guidelines. Is that, is that, am I correct or am I way off base? I think that's pretty accurate. Okay. So if someone was then required to have X amount of parking spaces, then could they then go back to the zoning board to try to get relief from those? Well, by definition, they would be able to appeal that decision, but built into this would need to be the cooperation of the understanding between the planning and zoning boards that we've already, through this through this um, uh, this proposal of the law, <coughs> liberalized the parking, and that standard should be much more difficult. I feel like we are already currently referring um, applicants to the ZBA for things that that shouldn't have to rise to the level of that. And I'm not speaking about any one mm -hmm. variance, and especially um, one requesting 100% relief. Um, but the there must be an understanding and coordination between these boards, and I don't think that's unrealistic. To so if someone wanted a 50%, 75%, 100% relief from the standards, given them don't have standards and their recommendations now, those recommendations would be based upon the previous standards. They would then find it more difficult to go back and get a release from those standards that no longer exist? Yes. And I understand that, that I'm speaking wow. for... Okay, no, that's it's fine. It's just, okay. Um, but there's a, there's a big if there, John, too. Is that yeah. If that makes good planning sense. Mm -hmm. And so that's, and when, when Kurt mentions that, you know, this is, is kind of more, putting more burden on the planning board, one of those burdens is that because of uh, this law, and I think this direction, a lot of our laws are inching towards. You know, we're going to be relying more on the you know common sense, human intuition, whatever of the planning board, rather than trying to put everything rigidly in in, every, in neat little boxes ahead of time, simply because we can't predict everything. So it puts a bigger onus on the planning board, um, you know, chairman and membership to, you know, when you when in the future, you're going to have to have an interest in getting a deeper knowledge of the planning process and you know more trainings. I mean there's tons of books out there. There's more of a more of a um, kind of engagement with, with of citizen planners in terms of the technical aspects of the job, what makes good planning. Mm -hmm. um, rather than try to figure out what, what makes good planning ahead of time and write it into a table and then kind of hand that to the planning board to simply rubber stamp and implement, which kind of it feels like sometimes it's watching the planning board. Yeah. Is that, I don't know if that makes sense, yeah. because there is that element that's missing in the conversation. The hinges, um, this, you know, could work well when we have a good planning board. You know, if, if in 20 years, you know, there's a, a just whatever, there's just a planning board that's not, doesn't really pay attention or whatnot, this is going to go badly. And that, and that's, and that's, but that's, that's the hinge is, do we trust the people we appoint to make good decisions? And if we don't, then we need to appoint different people. In the well, big and, picture and sense, not about is, not talking about any individuals on the board right now. No, I understand. Part of my fear is is that that the planning board will relieve some, will not require the same amount from some as they do the others if they are similar businesses, and by doing that, you set a precedent which then allows people to come to the village and say well, that was arbitrary, mm -hmm. and here's a here's a lawsuit to defend. So, it but the planning board doesn't operate on precedent. So it seems to me that. that, that we're setting ourselves up for a series of lawsuits by applicants based upon what they consider to be arbitrary because there are no longer any set standards. Most anything can be considered to some degree to be arbitrary. And I know as a business person, and other people I know that own small manufacturing businesses and service business warehouses, one of the things that they really like is consistency. And they really like having standards because then they know where the boundaries are when they go to play the game. And if there are no boundaries, then everything becomes somewhat arbitrary. And that, that makes it difficult for businesses. It kind of discourages businesses from making an approach because the goalposts are constantly being moved. And then if you get a board that is strict now, 
next board is not, then you're really setting yourself up. That's another part of the question. I got a couple more. Go ahead. Corollary, I don't disagree with what you're saying, though. The corollary to that is that requirements that are 50 years old mm -hmm. need sure. to be changed and updated, Absolutely. too. And we now, our society in general, has a very different view of the environmental situation, of parking, of driving, so that 50 years ago, a walk-up business was unheard of, okay? We have walk-up businesses now that don't require any parking. So I think, it, I think it's more, yes, I think you do have to rely and trust the judgment of your planning board, but I also think, as we are going to do later, you have to update your zoning code. Absolutely. You have to update a lot of things, and Don't you can't live, all. you know, with with rules and definitions and businesses that are fifty years old and no longer are relevant. Absolutely. Okay. Agree That's with you. all. Okay. I'm not saying that we should have these specific standards in place. What I'm saying is the absence of any sort of standards will create as many problems and new problems than those that currently exist under the old standard. I understand what you have this standard. Completely agree. You know, but I think by not having any hard fast standards that you, you're going to create a whole new set of problems that we aren't even anticipating. But as Kurt pointed out, these are guidelines and flexible interpretation with existing standards as the backup. So by that I think he means if under an old standard mm -hmm. you must have 50 parking spaces, okay, and mm -hmm. you can't do it if you don't, Right. if in fact that business might attract 50 cars but 15 are going to walk up the planning board has the flexibility to say, we don't apply the 50, we think 35 will do. And right. that's... I understand. Yeah. And in terms of, of tourism, though, one of the issues I think we'll find out is, is that those standards would be great for people who live here in the village because we'll all understand we're all on board and we all want to reach the same political and environmental goals, but the people who visit here don't care. They're just looking for spaces. Um, I disagree with that. But well, anyway. I, 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 I doubt that someone who's coming from Connecticut has perhaps read our, our mission statements and no, but the, and but if, agree with them. If the visitor, I believe, if the visitor from Connecticut looks at the village and sees the village respects itself and it's clean and tidy, they're not going to litter. Okay? I think people do try when they go into a community to observe mm -hmm. propriety, mm -hmm. okay? I think we have more of a problem with our own residents and parking than we do by outside visitors. Um, do we know currently how many total available parking spaces we have? In total in the whole village? For, yeah, there are public parking spaces. Yes, there there is a number that was done as as um uh, by perhaps it was Mr. Chamberlain, but we have we have the data. I don't I don't know it offhand, but mm -hmm. there was there was a full inventory, and I doubt that it's changed significantly mm -hmm. from from that. So that's the answer. going to increase if we get the long term parking. Uh, yes. <coughs> yeah. Um. So existing businesses are going to be required to to maintain their parking based upon the old standards. Because that's they have to follow the laws that was in force at that time. And to the extent that they come already that they comply, in most cases they, they don't. I mean, mm -hmm. but yeah. Okay. Um, and I guess the, the issue in terms of, of, of a lot of the parking is that by um, in, in our efforts to try to um, encourage uh, a greater walking community by reducing by not increasing rather by not increasing the number of, of car parking spaces um, and by reducing the, the, the time on the meters that I've heard we're proposing to do, 
do we actually um, benefit ourselves with that? Because it becomes then not just a matter of, of, of spaces, but then the turnover of people who are constantly looking for it, which gets back to the whole residential aspect. I think that we just, I like the goals, I really do. I think that they're, they're admirable, and I'd like to see less driving, and I walk as much as I can, and I try to encourage everybody to bike and walk and do those sorts of things. But I think that by removing some standards, even if they need to be updated, by removing some standards, we're going we're gonna to find out that we may be uh, subject to the law of unintended consequences. <coughs> Thanks, John. May I just um, look at that? Yeah, cool. Awesome. Before, um, uh, just before we move on from there, just there, the point was made about um, how we would enforce um, our, our permanent parking that may come into being. And of course, I, I don't propose, I don't think it's a good idea to, um, to have parking enforcement officers working around the clock six or seven days a week. What you have is that the regulations for, for, a, for exhibiting that, that parking sticker would need to be, um, it would be, there would be zero tolerance in terms of that because otherwise what would happen is you'd be able to call specific towing companies authorized or, or by market forces, um, authorized by the village to tow in the cases where, those, where the signs are clear, the regulations are clear, and the sticker isn't there, that's how I would suggest it would be enforced. Um, and uh, that obviously would, that, also, that, that, word, that would get around by word of mouth. But that's a well. later conversation as we develop the concept. Yes, and, but this, I mean, in the same way that I, at some point I'd like to discuss um, collecting parking fees on Sundays, it's really just no different than Saturday in terms of folks driving to the village. And I don't want to suggest that everyone can take alternate means of transportation to visit New Falls. Of course there are going to be um, passenger vehicles um, coming in and so there, uh, there will be for un until gasoline reserves around the world run out, okay? But we're, we're doing the best we can with that and I would actually suggest that we maybe consider even collecting revenues on Sunday, but as you said, that's a, a discussion for another time. And that one got knocked down. That was in the original proposal. So we I might see. want to revisit that area. That Again, maybe by area not of the village, place. not... not um, to revisit it, yeah. maybe. Yes. Okay. Like Tom, I, I agree with the goals here, but I'm a little fuzzy on the procedures. So if um, business A needs 50 spaces and the planning board said, well, you really just could have 35 because we, you know this, that'll make your business work. And then business B wanted... Uh, needed 50 spaces, and the planning board said, yes, you have to have 50 spaces. <laughs> now business B, what do they do? Could, do they go to the ZBA and appeal it? And then what basis does the ZBA make a decision since there's no clear um, standard? Well, what we have is a guideline instead of a completely rigid, um, rigid regulation as we have right now. Um, at least for the interim, we're proposing to make it so that there still would be this standard um, that would go by square feet, um, whether it be gross, net type of business, whether it's um, retail or service oriented. So those standards would those standards would still be in place, and the planning board is wise to um, reference those um, those baselines. And there will there will be a burden on applicants, but it's better than simply throwing up your hands and walking away from the village of New Paltz because you simply don't have the, can't accommodate, the, the physically accommodate um, off-street parking. So there you'd have, you'd have the expense of, of looking at um, uh, maybe usage of meters and, and street parking spaces, but you wouldn't have the impossible task of creating more land on a parcel that doesn't have it. But, but how does the ZBA make the decision? For somebody who appeals the planning board's decision, that they, that, uh, uh, the 50 spaces are required because business A only needs the 35. So they go to the ZBA. How does the ZBA make a decision when there's no clear standard? The, the first thing, uh, the first thing so that we have. have code to refer to. The first thing, that, well, you're right, we're, we're proposing to, to change it, to change regulations and the guidelines. The first thing that would happen is, of course, um, when these matters get referred, when an applicant chooses to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, they, there must be a referral or an opportunity for a referral from the Planning Board. In many cases, the Planning Board has been um, recommending favorable consideration of, of variances for, for parking. Uh, whereas in this case, um, they're probably not going to get a favorable recommendation from the planning board because the planning board will have overseen a process that will be much more um, 
uh, much more specific or very specific to the project before them, so they're not going to get, um, they're not likely to get a favorable uh, referral once they've used the guidelines and been as reasonable as possible. They're not going to encourage an applicant to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. They still may avail their rights to do so, but the, the Zoning Board of Appeals may not only consider the recommendation of the Planning Board, but they can certainly refer directly, and I do attend their meetings as well, so I will, I'm happy to um, steer them in the right direction on this, that um, the, the standards have now changed. So what might have been attackable as outdated and suburban-like um, off-street parking standards are now much more reasonable, and therefore um, the the, uh, te the standards to, to meet to get a variance would, would be changed as a result of this very action. Rebecca? Yeah, I just looked at the, um, the most recent parking study that I'm aware of, and there are an estimated 697 public parking spaces located within 400 feet of the village's gateway and B2 zone. The public parking inventory is a mix of on-street park parking spaces, which are 488, and off-street um, spaces are 209, which are within the municipal lots. And 200, 270 are metered. And that, again, was 400 feet within the gateway district? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you get a sense of the geography of that, that's much less than the number of spaces in the entire village, but is certainly an area of concern, especially to those uh, many of those who who came here tonight because they're uh, in that gateway district or adjacent to it. Any other comments? John? You know, if you think of maybe a multi-pronged approach, maybe that <clears throat> we have such a large influx of students and, and um, more than I've seen before, students have are bringing vehicles up with them from Long Island, Albany, wherever they're coming from. <clears throat> maybe we have to require people that want to live in our village, and if they want to leave a, a motor vehicle, park on the village, that they would have to require them to find a place to either house that vehicle. You know what I'm saying? So basically, if they want to bring a vehicle up here, and they want to bring it to New Falls, they have to find a place to put it on the street, maybe rent a garage, or find a lot that's open. I'm, I'm not saying that's the solution. Maybe there's got to be a multi-pronged solution that requires responsibility not only from the planning board and the zoning board and the resident, but from people that are coming here on a temporary basis to figure out where to where do we put all these vehicles? Like so many challenges. I'm not saying that's the answer, and I, I don't like that answer. But maybe it's some sort of way that we could, you know, figure out a way to uh, to alleviate our congestion. It could be part of the solution. Part, and part I think every great challenge, most exactly. of the great challenges that confront all of us individually and collectively involve more than just one silver bullet answer. Right. So I certainly can appreciate that. And and uh, we know that um, I think there are regulations that um, well, first of all, I think if I understand correctly, the history in the village is that meters were. Were um, were thought to be necessary, but um, you know they were they were a cost. Um, they, there was an, uh, there needed to be a lot of work done and money expended, but but the village placed them because they didn't want to see vehicles and perhaps even over certain um, college break periods left in certain areas of the village for for days or weeks at a time. So I think there are even some regulations about leaving vehicles for a certain amount of time, maybe more than 24 hours in certain areas. I'm trying to think if if. If that's the case, I don't know for sure. Well, you know, the Downtown Business Association years ago, they were the ones that pushed that idea of putting meters around. I remember when I moved here, there were not any meters. And actually, it was actually at that time, it really was not, it wasn't very difficult to find a place to, uh, to park. But what I had actually said was it would be great if, in lieu of the meters, because it wasn't really a money making venture at that point. It was just basically trying to make sure nobody could pop their vehicle on Main Street and leave it there for days and days and days. But obviously now it's a money-making venture, and people are looking at it in that, in that light. Um, but if we had somebody, let's say, instead of checking the meters and having to worry about maintaining, how many meters do we have in the village? Um, I don't know, but many, that's for sure. Okay, so it's two of the seven machines. So we have to make sure they're operating properly. We have to, you know, all that. Wouldn't it be make a lot more sense if the person could just chalk the vehicle? 
Uh, yes, and I think I think again that that's a that's an approach that could be considered as part of the um, as part of the permits and, right. and a whole system. But it, it's not impossible right. even for a community of um, of, of, of just seven thousand people that is an urban community. Yeah. Any last comments? I uh, move to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, question okay. about that. I think the gentleman asked that the uh, hearing be held open so that they could get the uh, answers to the questions that were raised before. Is that, am I correct? Is yes. that your request? I don't know if I agree with it or not, but is that your request? If there's a change in the proposed ordinance, we'd like to have an opportunity to again address those changes. Well, you can, as, we did, as, we did, as we did for the public, well, if there are any, if we, if the public is, has been persuasive to anyone on the board, at, when, at the public hearing, when we discuss the law, someone may propose some changes. That's it. But, but uh, just like the budget, um, you know, that we, we can close the public hearing. That doesn't close off your ability to comment. That's we have public comment and everything. Well, it doesn't <coughs> close off the ability for the board to amend if they feel they heard something. Mm -hmm. Right. If we choose to amend it, depending on this, mm -hmm. how substantial mm -hmm. it is, but we would have another public hearing. But you can't leave the public hearing open, open and act on the law. Right. Right. In any way, yeah, we can't actually. So is that there? Yes. Yeah. I'd like to, if there's an amendment to the proposed ordinance, I'd like the uh, hearing to be reopened. Or it would have. We to would be, have to do it. If the, at, at a certain level threshold of significance, you have to have a whole new separate uh, public hearing. You can make minor changes that don't change the intent or general nature of the law. But that's why we have our attorney would tell us if that threshold has been crossed or not. Uh, so the motion to close the public hearings on the table. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay, we read the announcement for the next local office. Yes, the carryover from last week. Oh, it is right. Sorry, the last three. Anyone here to discuss uh, more parking? Oh. This is the parking plant. This is mm -hmm. the uh, establishing space or eliminating space. Yeah. Uh, is anyone here to speak to this local law? No? All right, then I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Um, it's the that we got the letter from the planning board, or was it another one? That's the next one. That's okay. the next one. All right. And the last right. uh, public hearing is uh, held open from last week as well yeah. uh, regarding the amendments to zoning for definitions. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Yes, Allison, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please. please. Um, I have a letter here from um, some of my neighbors from Prospect Street and Portland Heights. Um, we understand that I'm going to just read it. We understand that many of the proposed prohibitions that are under review were adapted from, the Ulster, from Ulster County Municipal Codes. The suggested revisions may work well in some places, but we want to highlight that because of the college and the student population, New, New Paltz has special issues concerning bars. This has become quite clear in the ongoing issues we have been dealing with in our neighborhood, and we have been confronted with several problems with the village code. Our concerns and some suggested solutions are described below. We specifically address two code set, uh, sections, definitions and 21239B3, conditions and safeguards for special use permits. So first for definitions, for bar, and for restaurant. In the village code, different zoning regulations apply to a bar versus a restaurant. Specifically, Article 7 to 1241 <coughs> applies only to bars and not to restaurants. Because of the nuisance characteristics emanating from a bar, a bar is not permitted within 200 feet of a residential district or 500 feet of a church or a school. Thus a, thus, a restaurant is permitted within those setback restrictions, but a bar is not. In order to enforce the setback requirements for a bar, is it essential that the definitions of a bar and restaurant make the distinction between the two crystal clear. This becomes tricky as many establishments in New Paltz have both restaurant and bar uses. Some establishments serve primarily as restaurants during daytime and evening hours and primarily as bars after 10 p.m. Because a bar can create nuisance characteristics, it is imperative to preserve the safeguards provided in the 200-500 foot rule. We are concerned that your proposed revision of the definition of a bar to include the phrase 
having as its principal or predominant use serving beer, wine, or liquor, muddies rather than clarifies the situation. How could a principal or predominant use be defined, proven, or disproved? We have also seen that limiting the number of seats at the bar does nothing to prevent a crowd of standing patrons packed into the bar area. And we've seen that. The number of seats means nothing because people can just stand crowded in the establishment. Any establishment that receives an on-premise liquor license from the state liquor authority has the potential to become what is typical in New Paltz, a restaurant by day and a bar late at night. The revised definition does nothing to prevent this from happening. Additionally, I don't know, I've heard about this, so I don't know if there were uh, suggestions about distinguishing between a bar and a restaurant by the percentage of sales for food and alcohol. And if that has come up, that's problematic because we have seen in the past that obtaining receipts documenting sales is not easy. Thus, enforcement will remain a problem. So what can be done to prevent to protect village residents who live within 200 feet from a possible restaurant by day, bar by night establishment. We propose that any restaurant that serves alcohol be required to adhere to both the bar and the restaurant standards for particular uses. Note that the only location where these standards differ is when the establishment is within 200 feet of a residential district or, and or 500 feet of a church or school. It is just those establishments for which the definition of a bar should be crystal clear. In fact, the current definition of a bar in the village code is succinct and clear. As the present code specifies, any establishment that is under the auspices of the state liquor authority, authority is defined as a bar. Instead of revising the definition of a bar, the definition of restaurant can be revised by inserting non-alcoholic in front of the word drinks. With this suggested revision, establishments that serve food and alcoholic drinks would require two special use permits, one for a restaurant and one for a bar. Thus, any restaurant that is considered to be a bar by the State Liquor Authority would fall under the 200-500 restriction opposed on bars. Establishments that primarily serve food but also serve beer and wine could apply for a variance. Or alternatively, um, uh, an alternative suggestion is for the village code to be revised by using the same definition of a bar as used by the state liquor authority. On-premises liquor, this is the SLA's definition, definition, generally considered to be the standard bar license, allows on-premise consumption of liquor, wine, and beer, and also for the sale of beer, blah, 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 blah. Um, food, such as soups and sandwiches, must be served. Thus, if an establishment in the village requires a standard bar license from the SLA, that establishment would be defined as a bar. It would therefore be required to confirm to the standards for that use, not allowed within 200 feet of a residential district and 500 feet of a bar. An establishment that has a full service food menu in addition to liquor, wine, and beer would apply for two special use permits, one for a bar and one for a restaurant. These revisions would prevent establishments within 200 feet of a residential district from becoming a bar. Okay, then 21239B3, these are conditions and safeguards for special use permits. According to the current code, the planning board shall attach such conditions and safeguards to any approved special use permit and development plan as are, in its opinion, necessary to ensure initial and continual conformance to all applicable standards and requirements. In all cases, the planning board shall retain continuing jurisdiction. This continuing ju jurisdiction has been problematic. This section of the code has no teeth. The meaning and process of continued, continuing jurisdiction is not clear. In our dealings with problems in our neighborhood, we have seen that the village board and the planning board have differing views about what is meant by continuing jurisdiction of the planning board. A very clear procedure must be specified to ensure initial and continual conformance of SUPs, and the jurisdiction of the planning board must be clearly defined. The lack of clarity on this section of the current code has led to continuing problems in enforcement of the code and SUP conditions 
as well as inordinate amounts of time and money at taxpayer expense devoted to non-compliance uh, issues. We thank you for your attention to these important code problems, and we would like the statement to be included as part of the public record for this hearing, as well as a similar letter that we wrote a, wrote a year ago in which we addressed problems in the code and some possible solutions. So I would like to give both of these to be part of the public record. And um, shall I read all 16 names? Um, Who signed the letter? Okay, so at Dr. Allison Nash, Chris, um, Prospect Street, Christine Marmel, Prospect Street, Stephen Cook, William Murray, June Wheeler, Rosalind Cherry, Elizabeth Harchow, Juliana Harchow, Peter Lichtenstein, Lisa Fields Jacobson, Peter Bayer, Meredith Johnson, Tim Curtis, Tina Eiler, John Witter, Barbara Youngman. And these are all residents of Prospect Street or Orchard Heights. Thanks, Allison. Please. Um, Regarding the state liquor authority definition, I mean, my question too would be, a regular restaurant who then served liquor would be considered as just a bar, and that kind of doesn't really make sense to me. A regular restaurant that doesn't serve that, that liquor? That does serve liquor would then be a bar. A Is restaurant that, that serves that has Right, that serves liquor, that has a license. a bar and a restaurant because people be turned into a bar. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, what I was kind of thinking is what if what if we base the definition of the bar by hours of operation? Like, if you're a bar, there's a limitation to what hours. Like, if you're if you're operating past eleven o'clock or twelve o'clock or what, whatever the case may be, then that would con and like serving drinks after that hour that would constitute you as a bar, and therefore you shouldn't be in two hundred feet of a residential area because at nighttime. You know, that because you know, you're better off in the downtown area where you're not yes. surrounding people. Because, because I think, that, you know, restaurants might want to serve liquor. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know if I necessarily would want to stop them from doing so, but at the same time, I think that, you know, obviously we need to make sure that we're not allowing, you know, establishments that want to have certain expectations the way they're going to do business to mm -hmm. interfere with the way our residents want to. Well, I, I think I think what you're saying has merit, and in the comments on the proposed zoning amendments, which was on the table in front of us, right. one of the things that the planning board um, wrote in here, and it talks about, um, you know, what the New York State Liquor Authority, which she's, which Allison spoke to a little bit as well, um, and what, but one of the things it says. Uh, keeps the area primarily devoted to the service and on-premises consumption of liquor open for business after the rest of the establishment has closed. And I think that that's exactly what you're speaking about in terms of it being like a restaurant by day and a full-on bar by night. Because it's the same area. Be it right. Distinguish it. Well, yeah. well, that's why it's saying keeps the area primarily devoted to the service. It's it's the same space is what it's saying. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and, that, and that's right. exactly what you're talking about where it's, you know, that's that's how it's defined. It's defined by not just having that space as a bar. Like, like if, if the restaurant and the bar were to close at the same hour when the kitchen stops serving, the bar is then closed, you know, for all intents and purposes. When everybody's done with their meal, they leave. That is one type of establishment versus an establishment that stops serving food at a certain hour and then becomes just a right. bar, which which is exactly what you're saying in terms of the hours of operation. Well, yeah, I mean, kind of, because if you look at, like, uh, McGill Cuddy's, they're serving food well, until that's, four in the morning. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking about, so, too. So Part of their special use permit is to serve food till 4 a.m. Right, so it has to be that the, the business altogether stops operating at a certain hour, and that's the clear defining line, not like, well, we stopped serving food, so now, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that can be fudged either way. Right. Well, I think the combination of those two things would cover all of it, whereas, you know, a business that, so that what you're saying is that a, a business that is a restaurant that also wants to be able to serve drinks with meals right. doesn't, just become a bar afterwards, and, and that is probably the hours of operation thing that would... What? But you need the adjective alcoholic drink, mm -hmm. not just drink. Oh, right. Well, 
Sorry, that was implied in this conversation, but obviously in the law we would have the it, you know, better language than what I'm using at the table. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I think you know, the combination of those two things is a, an, an important detail. Does, does that make any sense, or is that... Um... Actually, I, let's put it this way, drawing the line between bar, it is very tricky. And I was, right. and I, I actually, after having a crash course, again, this is by far the most dynamic community with regard to bars and restaurants since I came here last June. Um, I, I, I've seen now how hard it is to draw that distinction mm -hmm. in a place where um, that attracts so many uh, res restaurant goers and bar goers. Now, at the same time, um, I'm enthralled at the existing base of restaurants and the interest in new restaurants here. I'm absolutely enthralled about it, and I think it's one of the reason that, reasons that people come to New Paltz. At the same time, um, I, I absolutely feel it is my responsibility to do everything possible to keep bars from, from disturbing residential areas. One of the regulations we mentioned is the 200 foot rule. Um, another one is, and I, and I know this almost sounds um, uh, overly technological, but even the idea of, um, with technology so much cheaper than it was, the idea of measuring decibels. I, 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 I yearn for something that would measure des a stationary measuring tool for decibels. Don't, where don't, 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 don't get started. Don't 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 a little bit of background here? Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, I see That's why I started laughing at you. Yeah. Like, I get it. Well, I, I know that there's, okay. There's, there's a history now. here. <laughs> I get it. Um, okay, well, uh, actually, that wasn't, uh, that probably wasn't. Right that was that. not very yeah. wise. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but was, here, here in your pulse, yeah. you know, it, it just goes to show you how in planning and zoning, defining these things, and, and welcoming one establishment <laughs> while potentially losing control over another is an extremely tricky balance. We all know right. that, that many of us have, have dedicated ourselves but to But is Brian's idea of the time inserted into the de definition? Okay, let, let me just make sure. Would that help? So in other words, at, at, at the time where they stopped serving food. They, and they, they're a restaurant. They stopped serving food and they don't serve alcohol either. It's closed. Basically, okay. yeah. If you serve, if you're a place that serves, if you're a restaurant that serves full on liquor mm -hmm. and whatever and food, then you close at eleven o'clock. If you choose not to close at eleven o'clock and you're open till four, you're then you're bar. then you're a bar. If you close at eleven o'clock, well, then you're a restaurant that serves liquor. Okay. Actually, I I do think that that's that's a rash that's a rational approach and one I hadn't thought of. And then it's just the a timing. Well, right. what about what about one a, a restaurant that it's it's very obviously a restaurant that serves alcohol and the bar portion of it stays open one hour later than the rest of the restaurant. You know where it might be till midnight as opposed till four. Sure. The problem is there's not a bar portion of many of the restaurants. It's just yeah. the just the establishment. There's not a bar portion. Well, and well, you always have to serve food according to state liquor authority. The places I'm thinking of are much more that way, like Il Galagiano or Atabula. They have, they have a much more sectioned off bar area that when the restaurant portion of it closes down, there's nobody sitting in any part of the restaurant except at the bar. And it's usually only for like an hour, I think, is, is the time difference. So by midnight, they're closed. So, I mean, that, and that's... You know, I, I mean, there's a big difference between midnight and 4 a.m. Um, so I think we would have to, you know, maybe the hours of operation portion of it that Brian is speaking to is what's going to play into it, play a large factor. Yes, and, and then, then we take implementation and administration and enforcement of this. Um, if I understand correctly, um, the, of course, last, last call in New York State is 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. except for counties. I think counties that that decide to the counties the, can county. change it yeah okay well realizing that that's not that that's not going to change I mean, again uh, the all, a lot of the adjacent states of course close earlier some of them oh, hours yeah. early. we just have new york state happens to be 4 a.m um so i understand that this is tricky because obviously the restaurants we don't want to take away their vitality by saying you know everyone out by a certain time or or you know 11 o'clock no 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 cocktails with dinner i mean that, that's that's pretty strict, and, and, and I can see enforcing that difficult because really I don't I don't think we can rely on calling our next building inspector out at 
at all hours of the evening um, to enforce these things. I, I don't see that, and I and I, I had never heard of that till I came till I came here. <laughs> um, if anything, um, it's probably, in my opinion, more of of a law enforcement matter about disruption or drunken disorderly conduct or excessive noise. And I know, I think, I think I get it that 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 is difficult to to be called to the scene as as a as um, a law enforcement agency and still have that activity continuing as it is and not quieting down. Right, but what but what you're I think what you're speaking to is the idea of people walking home from these establishments and being loud in the street, if the activity being something that's passing. But I think one of the issues that we're actually talking about is not the passing noise, but the noise from the establishment Absolutely. itself and in proximity to residential areas. Jones, very few, there's only very few there's places in the village that that happens. I mean, I think there's three establishments that are in proximity to the residential, within 200 feet of a residential district. But if you have, if you say you can't enforce the 11 o'clock rule, which I think would work, but if it's not enforceable, then I want to see the two as special use permits, because we need a protection for those establishments that are next to residential districts. If you're claiming to be a restaurant, <coughs> okay, that implies that you primarily serve food and alcohol as ancillary, and you generally close at 11 o'clock at night. Certainly, most, most yeah, resi <coughs> prim primarily a restaurant. You're right, of course. Would would for a restaurant to serve food up till eleven o'clock, and then convert itself after mm -hmm. that is not a restaurant by this definition. And we, sh you're right. We should be able to pin that down. And so, so we should be able to pin it down with Brian's suggestion of eleven o'clock yes. or twelve o'clock. I don't care. Yes, I can. Okay. I can accept the and fact. And a bar that. is primarily a, a place that serves alcohol, mm -hmm. and food mm -hmm. is ancillary. Right. Well, right. Now, like Snugs cool. has pickled eggs, pickles, and vegan cookies. <laughs> and that is and definitely and ancillary. And <laughs> <in that finish. laughs> right, and and <laughs> bags of chips. But, but, so like, right. and and that satisfies the food factor. I mean, I guess we also have like cup of noodles that I can really make for you if you want. But that's about oh, that's that about it. Done. It's a microwave. Okay. But <laughs> yes, well, actually, well, that that's a good example. Yeah, like we are we are a bar. That's right. a good example. The grill is out back, structure. so when yeah. you see Snugs Bar and Grill, well, the grill is I mean, out I've barbecue. Been, I've been watching some of our, our our newer establishments in in difficult locations where again even the idea of a residential district and and a commercial district let's face it we're a, a, a village with a traditional patchwork of mixed uses we're promoting that in our North Chestnut Gateway district we're promoting the coexistence in the same building of residences and restaurants some of which may end up being draws for um, for a lot more drinking than eating so right. I I mean I it's, that, it's tough to just say. That's the point. Yeah. That's right. the very point. They yes. not to be a draw for more drinking if they're a restaurant. Well, no. That's the differentiation right there. Well, no, I think, I think the point is that in those cases, like if you want to be a bar in a mixed use area, that, that's fine to me. And you can be open late. I think the, the problem is when you're like on the outskirts <laughs> and you're like your backyard is like a neighborhood. So it's, it's about like the zone more than. I mean, you know. Well, you're right that some some yeah. area, of course some of our neighborhoods are virtually exclusively residential. I, rec right. I recognize that. Yes. Right. I mean, if people move in upstairs and rent an apartment upstairs from a bar, they can't then say, "Oh, this bar is making so much noise." You're right. living right. upstairs from a uh, bar. Uh, you knew that well, it was noisy. Uh, they can and they do. Well, you can yeah. and you and they do. Yes, but. It is more warranted in some situations where it is closer in proximity to a residential area, clearly residential area, as opposed to you're living right on Main Street and you're going to expect no. a certain level of are you thinking? Are you thinking that like, so as we develop B3 down that corridor and you want to, you know, slap a, a bar down there, be, is that 200 feet from the next street up? Is that going to hinder people being able to do that? Or, you know, 200 feet over from Huguenot Street? Are you going to be touching people's backyards? Would that stop that? 
Um, that's, I think that's potentially an, an issue. Yeah, I think and, that's and a great question that we have not yet explored. It's, that's right. I, it's not written in, and I cannot claim in any way it's written in to the regulations. Um, it's, more, it's more about the transformation of that neighborhood, which I realize is um, some distance from, uh, from the, the part of the village. That's skirting the issue and the question. Okay. And okay. Get back to it. And we're talking about now. Okay. And definitions now. And the distinction between a restaurant and a bar. Now, are you saying that you believe it is okay to do both a restaurant and a bar in different transformations depending upon the hour of the night? A restaurant, you mean as we've been talking about distinguishing? I think you need words? to repeat your question. All right. A restaurant is a restaurant, and say we agree a restaurant is a place that you go to primarily have food in a nice ambiance and liquor is ancillary to it. Uh, right, but maybe. Maybe. Well, it's tough to define. See, see, that's that's what I'm saying. That's tough to define. Like, if I want to go out and like have some cocktails and have an appetizer mm -hmm. and maybe grab a dessert, that's a meal, and I'm at a restaurant. Doesn't necessarily make it a bar. But if I want to have like margaritas with my nachos and then you know a chocolate cake at the end, I might still be at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But no, no, no. You're, you're seeing the you go to a restaurant. I don't care. Not an appetizer. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying though, it's, it's you're going for food like, and your margarita. But am I, am I at a bar or am I at a restaurant? No, that's what I'm saying. Thing. So you're at a restaurant, and traditionally, and your idea, restaurants is generally closed. Okay. Okay. So we taking your idea. Restaurant closes at eleven. Same physical place transforms itself. From a restaurant to a bar. In other words, they, That's Allison's okay. point. So they, in other words, they stop serving food. They stop serving food and they, and they start serving alcohol. Hey folks. <laughs> hey folks. Um, I know it can yeah. get dull at these public hearings, but um, just so we can all hear each other, uh, I know. And thank you for being patient. But I, I guess after, can you maybe finish what you were saying, Sally? And then we should probably see if there's any of the public who wanted to talk, because that may... Yeah, but I'm but so, trying... Rather, just so if there's anyone, but not the Allison and the 16 signers. Yeah. We, Allison we is, is raising this very issue. Yeah, no, please continue. Yeah. I, just, I wanted to get everyone okay. focused again. So, if I think the question Allison is raising, which has legitimacy, and that is, our definition say you're one or you're the other. Mm -hmm. It does not deal with transformation after 11 o'clock. Right. Okay. And what she is saying, I think, is if you're transformative and you are not closing at 11 o'clock as a restaurant, which we should have in the code, that if you are a restaurant, you close at 11 o'clock. If you're a bar, you don't have to close till 4 o'clock. So, the, the problem is in that blind part where can the same business be a restaurant till 11 o'clock and then become a bar till 4? And her request is if that is true and can happen, then two special use permits must be applied for. Did I get it? Yes. Okay. And I we haven't Thank you. Okay. Go on there. Yes, and, and now that I understand even better, uh, yes, I think, um, well, two special permits, I'd still like to think for, for, one, for one property, you're, you're really going to say that you're either going to choose, I would say you're going to choose whether you're with those two categories, and you're going to get one special permit, but it's going to have that regulation in it that there's a moment in time where liquor sales stop regardless of what the county or state allows. And they stop. Um, and, I'm sorry. And you either you either close if you're a restaurant at, at 11, um, or you stay open and you're a bar. So it would be you'd be. Oh, I see. We're saying that you could be both. All right. Sorry. That's um, the point. I, I shouldn't have uh, missed that. Um, you can't accept. You can't be a bar within 200 feet of a 
residential right. district. Right. So you'd have to be a restaurant, and so you'd have to close at 11. Right. So that would solve it. That part, that would solve that part that sounds would very solve straightforward, it. yes. So um, if you're within 200 feet of a, of a residential district or 500 feet of a church and school, you can't apply for a special use permit for a bar. I actually that. thought that that, was, that is I thought that was our regulation. No, mm -hmm. but because it's so because it's so lopsided, you could say, well, I'm a restaurant. I'm serving food until four in the morning, but we also have to be serving <laughs> cocktails until four in the morning. But the cocktails are ancillary. That, so, that's what's happened. That's what's happened. Right. Like, right. I'm not. I'm not really a bar. But I'm not really a bar. I'm just open until four in the morning and serving drinks and with music. Okay. Actually, I I guess I misunderstood even our current regulations as I thought they restricted. Bar it does. with or without a restaurant within 200 feet. It does right, it does. Bar, but what happens is places apply for a restaurant. They say they're a restaurant, but they're serving food. And they want to stay open until 2 in the morning, and so they do. And they're really not a restaurant after right. 10 at night. They're a bar. Right. They're just serving you know, bands. And okay, well, the, the curfew time. So that the we're curfew time about. would do it. Then yeah. if someone says, oh, but I don't want to be just a restaurant. Then that kicks in a request for a second special use permit, which state liquor law prohibits church and neighborhoods, and it was not enforced. Right. So no, you have to have it in no, our books. That's not true. No. Not for villages of our size. Hmm? The state law does not apply to villages of our size. Huh. A, a 500 feet from a, a, a church or school. I looked that up. That's why I did too, and it does. Oh, it doesn't well, We can resolve, we can figure that out. We'll look that up later. Um, but Tom, do you have something? We still should have it in our, on our books. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not requesting uh, any discussion of this, please. Uh, <laughs> I, I just want to make uh, sure. Uh, Maurice was here earlier, and uh, he uh, had uh, two documents. One, a uh, message to the village board, and a second uh, document, comments on proposed zoning amendments which are largely those that were received from the attorney for the uh, planning board. And I would just like to make sure that you all have them, you have access, access to them. Mm -hmm. And indeed, uh, actually the chairman had requested that, well, he could not stay uh, to this point. He did request that um, uh, that it be read into the record. That was that was his respectful request for, for the village board. Yeah, we, we, got, we got the letter as well Sorry, as the document. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Any other comments? Public comments? I will. Yes, uh, very quickly. I made a statement at the town hall. I would like to commend your building or grounds or whatever you call that department for the excellent job they did in snow removal. I mean, it was really nice to be able to get out of where I live and be able to do whatever I have to do and not have any problems. Thank you. Alex? I just have one more question. Um, the part about continued juris continuing jurisdiction, is that something that you will get into? Well, it's special or use permits, so. Uh, yeah, because I there was another part to what I read about continuing jurisdiction yeah. not being defined. So I just uh, want to make sure. I made a note of it, and okay, thank we'll, you. we'll make sure. Don? Uh, if the regular meeting ever starts, uh, will there be public comment? Yes, public we comment. will be doing public comment, yes. <clears throat> Uh, any last comments on this public hearing? <coughs> Sorry, I, I, know, I misspoke. I said public comments. That's yeah. my fault. Uh, then I move to close the public hearing. For a second. Um, How radical would the changes? Joe, I, got, I think you all got the message from Joe as well. It's a message that he had spoken to Allison already mm -hmm. about her uh, proposed changes and that uh, where we would go that it wouldn't be significant enough that we need to re-notice that. So we don't well, need to re-notice it. According hearing. to our attorney, we can close this tonight and still uh, pass it. We can't do anything until next Wednesday because of the timing issues with the referrals. Um, the 45 days are up uh, for the village plan are up on Friday, so we can't take action until 45 days after it was submitted. So we have to do it next Wednesday, well, if at all. the county did not come. They have a shorter time. They don't, we don't have, it's 30 okay. days from the county, yeah. So next week is when we would act on it. It's the first day we could act on that. that. That and the one prior. So. I'm sorry, not the one prior, the one regarding um, the, the guidelines. <coughs> the, what do we call it? Because there were two side, uh, two parking laws tonight. So yeah. the first one uh, that we discussed the about one. the guidelines versus the. the, the, the can't act on that. 212 that's right. The next one's as the earliest we can act on those two. But we can close the public hearing on this uh, and or hold it open wherever we'd like to do. Well, and then we'll discuss it later. Mm -hmm. okay.
I move to close. Yeah, so you seconding. Oh, is there any other second. discussion? Yes. yes. No, please. Yeah. Um, this is a very important issue, obviously. We've been talking about it for a long time, for a couple of years. It's, uh, it's happening now. We have litigation about it. It's really important. So okay. while I'd like to come to a resolution, I don't think if we have uh, information sent in by the planning board, and they'd like to look at it again, even though they're coming into the game a bit late here, with this, well, they've been there a long time. I understand, but I, I, I think it's important enough that we take those comments into account and uh, other comments that were made tonight. And it's not going to hurt us to hold the, the hearing open until at least next meeting because we can't vote on it till then anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we shouldn't close the hearing, that we should hold it open at least until the next meeting. The reason I want to close it. Story is so that we can direct the attorney to incorporate into the law those things that he discussed with Dr. Nash and that we can incorporate into the law the suggestions from the planning board. If we leave the hearing open, then we do not have the modified document to vote on next week. Well, I don't, I don't, I think the planning board's asking that you know they. They had comments from their attorney, and, and we, we have, have the it. legal response. We have the legal ability to vote on it, but I don't think that they want to be done with it yet. And I don't have a problem keeping it open until they're assuming they move properly, that they get their full input. Because from from the, the chairman of the planning board, I don't think they said to go ahead and. They actually didn't say didn't request that we keep the public hearing open. They actually just requested that we delay taking action on these amendments. Right. So, yes. so if we, as long as we're not <coughs> voting on this tonight, that this will allow us to still incorporate their, um, and their, I would their like proposed to make changes a motion later that we do incorporate those I, things, and I would support that. Yeah, that we incorporate the discussion. That Dr. Nash had with Joe Ariel. I have a question with them. I just sent these comments. Okay. Well, then we will incorporate well, that's into the thing. From, from the letter, from the letter we received from the planning board chairman, it says the planning board may require our attorney's presence at our next meeting to clarify or discuss changes we may suggest in our individual review time before the meeting. Yeah, I don't well, think seems we'll be able to, to vote on to this say next week. That, that seems to me to say that, that they don't think they're done with it yet. And while it would be nice if they had been done with it yet, if they're not, it's important enough, I think, what difference does it make if it takes us two weeks in something so important as this? It doesn't, but we don't need to have the public hearing open to do that. That was the other, the other half to that. Well, but because when other things come up, then there might be further comment and the, and the discussion from the public is probably the most important thing we have because there's so many different views about this. So, I mean, that's my point of view. I think we should keep it open well, until at least next Wednesday. M I guess my thoughts are that we are going to be making changes and if we, I, I'm, I'm open to either way. I don't, I don't feel particularly swayed to keep it open or <coughs> close it, but I'm thinking that we might even need to have a second public hearing if, we, if some of the, I mean, we don't, you know, right here, I don't know if these are substantial enough changes to not merit another public hearing, but based on what this letter says, if there are other changes that might be substantial enough to have a second public hearing. The planning board does not respond to this board through public hearing mechanism. The planning board oh, reviews and makes recommendations. Oh, stops. I know. I'm saying, but once one. they do, that might, if we want to adopt those into this, they might be substantive enough that we would need to have a second public hearing so the public would still have oh, I see another you're opportunity. Saying. Right. Okay, you're going the other way. Right. Um, no, I I'm not saying that what, they're, what they have think, to submit has anything to do with our public I, hearing. I still think we should close this hearing if you're right and the changes are substantive enough have a second hearing, but I would like to direct that later in the meeting that certainly the modifications we had the discussion with the planner be implemented into, mm -hmm. and that can't be done if we if leave the public open. hearing open. Why, why can't it be done? Because you can't change it while the public hearing is open. Until well, after you, you close the hearing. You can't change it officially. Yeah, well, you can't change it legally. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Well, well, wait. Do you have something, Brian? Yeah. I mean, if we do uh, decide to make changes or we want to come up with some final answers as to what time restaurants are going to be open or whatever the case may be, holding the public here in a, uh, I guess we're in a yeah, can't case. do it. Well, we'll have to pay for a new one. I mean, we could right. talk about it, but at the end of the day, we'll have to re-notice it most likely. Right. I think it's um, more worthwhile to get the modifications we discussed tonight yeah. into. I see what you're saying. And um, then if we have other substantial enough changes, right. ask for a new hearing. But I think it's more important to get these changes in and your comments in. And we won't act on it until the planning board decides right. to give us recommendations for yeah. that, mm -hmm. even right. though it probably uh, should have. And as Jason said, we can't act that, on it tonight anyway. Right. We have to wait until the next Wednesday. Well, and I think also we should, I, I think we shouldn't even be looking at next Wednesday because I right. think it's going to take more. It might. Yeah. I mean, it will. If, we, it if, we wanted, if we were to get this on time with an agenda by Friday after afternoon, you know, Which that. isn't going to happen because the meeting isn't until next weekend mm -hmm. for the planning board. Right, exactly. Yeah. That but that would be next week, regardless. So it would be the twenty fourth that we're talking about. Right. The concerns raised the clarification, which I thought you had good solutions mm -hmm. to, which you understand, yeah. and could transmit to our attorney. I, I, I'd like and to and have it implemented. Yes. And a clarification on jurisdiction of the planning board tightening yeah. that up on special good. use permits. <clears throat> All right, wait, wait, let's, let's not go into the list yet because we've got people waiting for comments. Um, I know, but there's a motion on the table to... Oh, I thought we closed it. No, we didn't vote on anything. Yeah, else. we oh. didn't vote yet. Yeah. Uh, so is there any more uh, discussion on the topic of whether we should close the public hearing or not? And all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. All, right. all opposed? Nay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, let's... <coughs> Do, let's do this since we've been here for a while. Let's do public comment first, or the Pledge of Allegiance, and then public comment, and then maybe we can take a, a break for a minute. And yes, yes. I want to. And then we've got Nancy here. I'd like to do the um, the bond because it is a a, a, a good a, and budget conversation. But let's get the interview done first um, after a five minute break. But for now, let's would you mind, uh, all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, I know, Don, you had asked about the public comment. Is there anyone, anyone, else, anyone, else, anyone else here to discuss in general? Huh? Anyone, anyone here for public comment? The open, open session, say whatever you'd like. All right, looks like, Don, you're it. I already made his comment. <laughs> you already made your comment. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. That's what happens when you come in late. It's like to be by the microphone for public access. TV, there's sometimes when people speak and it's really not legible. Or Don legible. is on the public access. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. knows where all the trail are. So thank you. And I uh, stopped carrying around the big Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass and, uh, and gave in. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, the members at the table to, to please, I don't want to dialogue, I don't want to, have, I don't want to be interrupted, uh, just like to make a comment. Um, I see them sitting there together, and I'd like to congratulate uh, Tom Rocco and uh, John Cohen. I'd like to, uh, I see a number of their supporters at the table, so I'd like to congratulate <coughs> the Cohen Rocco ticket and the Cohen Rocco team um, on their success at the Board of Elections. Um, for people who don't know, there were, were to be four candidates for village trustee, and uh, Rebecca Rotzler and I put in our petitions. Uh, Sally Rose spoiled them, uh, Vicki Danskin challenged them, and the Board <coughs> of Elections did uh, say that there, that there were not sufficient uh, valid signatures on the petitions of Rebecca and myself. We have challenged that, and we do plan on being candidates. Um, but as I was envisioning like high fives yesterday in certain parts of town, I, I, I thought about it a little bit more, and I, I, I thought it might be some an empty victory in some ways, because these heavy-handed tactics that try to determine who the choices are that the village residents have at election time, these, these tactics, what, what do they say? What do they say about the faith that people have in their positions and the faith that they have that those positions will win out in an honest debate? What message does that does, does the tactic send? And, and you know, it, 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 these heavy-handed tactics, it, 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 
to me, tells me, to my interpretation, that there's fear. There's fear of an honest debate. There were to be four candidates with various views, and we don't have that if the Board of Elections you know, decision is, is, uh, is upheld. And I, 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 I think it's unfortunate. I think it's really unfortunate. I think it's chilly. And I don't mm. think this particular community, this village of New Pulse, um, reacts well to muscle. And I, I, that's what I perceive. You know, it's, it's, we could have challenged petitions. We, we didn't do that. And I, I, I think that's how the, the Cohen Rocket ticket, the, the Cohen Rocco ticket has chosen to begin this period. And, and I, I just, you know, I just think it's, uh, it's unfortunate. So that's, that's what I have to say. Yeah, you know, I figured, yeah. Uh, let's give it civil candidates. <laughs> <laughs> Tom first and then John. Okay. <coughs> And just, uh, just so you know, um, I don't care. I don't care whether I'm a supporter of or not. This is the last time any candidates are making speeches, and and we're, this is not going to be a, a candidate debate forum. This, I mean, I, just so, this is a, a very very enough, simple, simple declaration. There is no such thing as a Rocco Cohen ticket. Thank you. We have not running together. We have not consulted each other. We have done nothing uh, to collaborate in this. And there, I, I don't have very big muscles, so I did nothing uh, to foster a challenge. Mm -hmm. But if it's uh, the case that someone challenges petitions and the Board of Elections upholds the challenge, then that's not underhanded, sneaky, or muscular. It's simply following the rules that exist for submitting valid Petitions. If your petitions are not valid, then uh, you don't have a right to be on the ticket. Thank you, Tom. John? Thanks. Hi, board. Hi, everybody at home. I just want to verify what Tom Rocco said. Um, I like Tom Rocco. I like his wife. I appreciate what he does on the planning board. I appreciate his hard work, but we have absolutely nothing to do with each other as far as our campaigns. We never spoke to each other. So when I feel I see misinformation being blurted out to the public, that concerns me. Uh, number two, I appreciate Don's being upset about him being challenged. But when I was challenged six years ago by the Green Party, which you know, I don't want to get anybody upset here, which was... Um, Jason was involved in, at that time. Um, Don didn't say a word. Don didn't say anything. I think he's six years too late to express himself. And that upsets me. Because when I was challenged, nobody was there to stick up for me. And nobody said a word. Not Don or Rebecca. So I just want to make it clear that the process that I went through and that they went through is, is, is election law. And that's how we operate our elections. It's fair, it's square, and I think it's okay. Um, whoever you'd like to vote for, obviously I'd love to have your vote. Uh, no electionary, no electionary, <laughs> but I just want to make it clear <laughs> thank that's the situation, and thank you, I appreciate well, it. Thank you for factually presenting your opinions. Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. It is true, I foiled the petitions but I did not foil just two petitions. I foiled all four petitions. Thank you. With that, uh, we're gonna take a five minute recess and then we will come back, clean up the agenda and get everyone here home quickly who's here for a specific purpose. And thank you all for being here. We have uh, we have two agenda items from the clerk. Um, one is a resolution um, regarding ele uh, the election inspectors. Uh, the other is the approval of the Little League parade which is going on believe, this weekend. Uh, are there any other additions to the agenda? Yeah, we need to put the announcement on. Oh, right. Well, we have to add the laws that we want to add. Right, hold on one second. Let's do announcements. <coughs> Jason, Wait, the election I... inspector is also requested, respectfully requesting the board allow me to have Kelly Spangle here for the act. It's, it's, the, it's the third whereas. Okay, as long as it's in the resolution, that's Yes, fine. sir. 
I guess it's not technically an addition to the agenda since we didn't have a full <coughs> snow removal RFP, but I guess I want to make sure it's on next week's it agenda. Does. I've actually done <coughs> draft in the draft. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Thank you. Um, uh, well, let's just at least just add add B three. I think it, Ariana tells me it's more complicated than that. Um, but let's add discussion of the budget. Yeah. And these two requests. Yep, I got those two. And let's see, the other two we can't act on until Wednesday. Um. Um. Depend on the parking. Yeah. Changes. Did you want to do that? Yeah. Is there, there was no reason for that? Okay. No, I we can act on that one. Okay. Anything else? And, and discussion with Kurt about amending the zoning definition. Tonight? Well, to do it, and so we can act on it next week. Um, I mean, I was going to remove the allocation of $975 to the three parades, okay. but I think we may as well just have a parade conversation, so we'll just... Okay, yeah, if you want to shorten it Yeah, we exactly, get to it. It, it'll, we'll shift it. Um, there was one other, oh, oh, sorry. one other thing I wanted to do, the uh, it, under the consent agenda, the firefighters election, just move that, because I would like to make the announcement, rather than, you know, oh, skim okay. over it. Oh, take that off the consent agenda. Off the consent agenda, but leave it on the agenda itself. Right, right. Um, all right, anything else, any other changes? Then I'll move to adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, the other thing is I um, I talked to Sally uh, briefly, and, and uh, because our two uh, interviewees tonight for the Shape Gene ZBA under her, um, I guess, jurisdiction, for lack of a better word, um, I'm, per I'm fine not interviewing them, simply appointing them. Uh, I know it'd be frustrating to have to sit through all those public hearings, but um, is that so you would like to interview them? Or would you no, like to I'd like to interview them. I, okay. yeah, I mean, and do we have... Uh, like to have a conversation. They um, both gave. <coughs> I don't know. We, just, I just wrote a quick letter stating if they'd like to be considered. Yeah. There was no, there's no resume or cover letter. They cover did letter. both submit resumes. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Don't yeah, I don't think I've seen that either. Uh, there may be some emails. Well, anyway, for, for future, let's... for anybody future applying for something like this, I would like to get that resume when it's submitted to you. Um, for for if no other reason, but we've interviewed people in the past and during the interview found out they did not live in the village. Um, so it's, mm -hmm. you know, that could be a waste of <coughs> time. Yeah. All right, so do we want to interview, we've interviewed now, we've yeah. started interviewing in public. Okay, so do you want to do that in public or in the executive session? We've interviewed in public. Mm -hmm. Couple times. Yeah, once or twice. Uh, I don't want to call that. No, oh, uh, I recommend both of them, so I'm happy to point both of them. Uh, <laughs> I mean, would anyone like to, to yeah, I want to meet them. them in private? Yeah, I want to meet them and speak with them. Right, right. No, I mean, no we're past that. Do you want to do it in, in private, in, in, pri like, in an executive session, or here at the table? I say we go into executive session. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we do that, I just want to see what else people are here for specific on the agenda. Uh, obviously, Nancy's here for the budget. Item number 15. Okay, right. so move that I just up. want to know what's, what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we can do the announcements. Oh, people are still that That's true. is pretty much in committee. Okay, now just and because I keep track of monies that come in that don't wind up in my budget. <laughs> but we're, we, we had our first meeting <laughs> okay, that, that's yesterday, yeah. <laughs> and basically we are going to maintain the status quo on parades. Right. Okay, we have no application before the village for the regatta or the bride parade. Okay, we don't have them. And, but the police department apparently has them and they have not come forward. All right? Um, so well, we don't need to go into the issue yeah. right now. He yeah. just, I'm just asking what he's here for so we can... Yeah, well, we're not going to... We're going to keep the status quo until the committee. Right, but Ariana right. had just right. mentioned I, a minute yeah, ago we, that she we wanted to talk a, about it. I, I just wanted yeah, to update everybody. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay, so yeah, we'll just so put the update see. earlier on yeah, the agenda. Yeah, so okay. yeah, I was just yeah. concerned yeah. with my files. Okay, yeah. anything else? I, I asked Kurt to come here. I mean, he's here for obviously several things, but yeah. I asked him to speak with us in executive session uh, regarding the topic regarding the budget. Right. Um, yeah, and yeah, there are a couple of things. So he's going to he just asked. He's, so he's going to stick around for an executive session. Um, but let's let's see because we'll do that last um, last of this list up front, I guess. So let's do this, uh, uh, Stuart. You just, let's do announcements now. 
uh, yeah. while everyone's here, and then we'll go uh, in the other room, interview these two fine gentlemen, and come right back out. This should only take <coughs> so I have uh, three announcements. Uh, first of all, the uh, community improvement team, the CIT, uh, is inviting the, the village board, the town board, and the community foundation to uh, uh, come with them on their adoptive uh, highway cleanup of Main Street uh, this Saturday at 10 o'clock. And they're going to meet at the bus station, and I'm sure, even though I haven't spoken with them yet, but I'm sure that uh, Roddy will donate his dumpster to, to put it in so we don't have to call the DOT. And you just bring gloves, and uh, I know several of you uh, are coming. I hope everyone will. And if anyone else in the community wants to come help with that, uh, please do. Meeting at the bus station 10 o'clock this Saturday. Speaking of uh, cleanup on Saturday, uh, the 27th of this month at 8.30 will be the annual clean sweep and everyone meets at St. Joseph's uh, Recreation Hall uh, for a little orientation, something to eat, and then we go out in various places to, to, clean, um, to clean the community both in the village and the town. So everyone's invited to that and we usually have several hundred people that do that. And another thing that's coming up, uh, the college students the very next day, Sunday the 28th, uh, participate in a national program called uh, Relay for Life, which is a, a fight against cancer, raising money. Uh, it's, a, it's a relay while your member of your team is on the track from 10 in the morning till 10 at night. And uh, Ariana and I are sponsoring a team from of townies to go and, and help them at the college because at least it's an important topic for us. And uh, so if you'd like to join us, I know several people will be walking with us and others will be donating. And the, uh, if you need information, you can see us and you'll be hearing about that. But it's the team we're putting in is Team New Paul's Townies Fight for, for uh, Cancer. Townies Fight Cancer. And uh, so we hope you'll, you'll make that. And I, sorry, I have an announcement. Um, this Saturday, April 13th, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at the Reuse Center, located at 3 Clearwater Road in New Paltz, um, that you can join Susan Stegen to learn Composting 101. There is a $10 fee, and every participant receives an Earth Machine composter. So just so people know, that is a deal for a composter. Um, they are usually $50 <laughs> plus. Um, so $10, you get a, a compost lesson and a composter. Um, there are limited seats. So you must RSVP, call Laura Petit at the Reuse Center, 845-255-8456. Thank you. Any other announcements? William's joining us on Saturday. Yay! All right. Um, <laughs> good announcement, Saturday. Well, I just, this, this is an announcement. Just, hmm? you some? Um, all right, one brief announcement. We'll take this off the agenda. Uh, I'm happy to announce the uh, fire department had their elections last two, uh, I believe last Tuesday. Um, the chief, uh, again, is uh, Chief Kevin McGuire, first assistant chief, Patrick Koch, and second assistant chief, uh, Scott Schulte, will be joining us again. Um, so if you see them all, congratulate them again on winning their elections, and I would move that we um, approve the officers that the membership was. Second. Elected. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. And who have we got tonight? Robert and who? And Dave. Dave, thank you. Who wants to go first? <coughs> rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Flip a coin. All right. I move this to executive. I'll How second. about rock, paper, scissors? On shoe. On shoe. On shoe. On shoe. On shoe. Of course, on shoe. What do you think this is? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Huh. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right. Yeah. We're happy. Yeah. You did not vote to go. You only moved in the. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Adam and Dave to their respective commissions. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Robert. Welcome. Robert. Thank, Thank you for wanting yeah. to help us. Thank you. You prefer Rob or Robert? Rob. Okay. Brian, did you second her? Did you? Okay, just want to make sure I have official. All right. Um, and actually, let's do. Let's do, get this out of the way quick while Nancy's here. Um, at number 12 on the agenda uh, is the resolution to go out to bond for the new water tower um, at 1,300,000, wait, that's a typo. 
Up what? to 1,370. Yeah, it's just 1,370. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, we haven't done that one yet. Yeah, you should do that first and then oh. make the motion to bond. I, didn't, I, don't I think thought we needed this. So. I thought we needed this in the shorter time frame than that. <laughs> no. All right, then we can skip process. it. We'll, we'll table that. We'll actually pull it and we'll add it later. Well, but we have the. the well, we do the eleven. Bid, I'll move the resolution yeah. to allow Greer right and Larry oh. to advertise. You can do the bid first. Do the bid yeah. then. Oh, the oh, the motions yeah, yeah. have to be done yeah. first. Not that. Okay. I'll I thought. Never bid. mind. It, in the order they're listed. Thank you. I withdraw my motion and what was your? I moved. The resolution to allow Bernier and Larius to advertise for the CDBG water tank grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now I'll move the resolution to allow the village treasurer to seek a bond up to $1,370,000 with the understanding that we have received a $600,000 grant from the New York State Office of Community Renewal and the bond is our match. It's part of the resolution to the shiny Okay. All in favor? Um, is there anything else that you want to add? Since no. You, since you just have to authorize me to go to the bond. Well, well, she can just put, if it's unanimous, she can just put in all eyes. No, I think we better, I'll do the check one. Roll call. Okay. But we have, all right. How do you vote? You and right. I vote yes. Ariana? Brian, no. Yep. Mm -hmm. Brian? Yeah, all right. Stuart? Aye. Right, and I'll move yeah, and I'll move work. number thirteen because since it is all all part of the package, um, the resolution regarding environmental compliance. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Actually, why don't we do that as a quick roll call because the sheet calls for it anyhow. So Ariana. Aye. Stuart. Aye. And I'm I. Sally. Aye. Brian. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now that that dance is out of the way, um, <clears throat> we have some budget discussions. Is. 1010, and I apologize it's not on the agenda. I had assumed for some reason we were uh, just having a public hearing tonight and then having the bulk of the discussion on the budget next week, but we can start the conversation. Um, we also have the consent. Well, that's uh, can I just actually let's do the do, can, should, yeah, can I just ask what the just to clarify what the timeline is on the budget so we know we're online here. We have to pass the budget, whatever it is, by the end of this month, yeah, April right? 24th. And so we have, two more we have two more meetings to do it, but of course we wouldn't have to wait that long, but right. that's the latest we can do. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, so it would be um, by May 1st, right? It has to be adopted by May 1st, but I have to file some forms based on the right. So right. If we, we did And our we, last meeting in before May 1st right. is April 24th. We have a time for a special meeting after the 24th. If we I needed one, but not a lot of time. That's, that's why I, I, I highly doubt we'll need one yeah. because we've known this time for <coughs> some yeah. time now. All so right. Make as many changes as you can tonight to get you to where the number you're really going to be at. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, um, Ariana, how quick is the parades conversation? Because the budget is obviously longer. Um, I mean, I, I guess really, you know, Sally kind of covered it, <laughs> um, that we, I mean, we had this meeting, we decided to go with status quo. Um, I was going to pull this from the agenda because we didn't have any of the parades in front of us, um, but now we do have the Little League parade in front of us. Um, but I, I mean, I guess, Sally, I know we said we were going to go with status quo, but was this, this money was off the table because of that? I, I guess I just wasn't under the same impression. No, I think what we agreed to do in our first meeting was... I could pull up the notes I took also. Because members of the committee did not realize that the village DPW department expends overtime money for doing parades that it wasn't just a police cost and over time and we are it, it, it was like a, a break even basically break, break even for um, the little lake okay i just okay. i just wanted to double check because i mean i know that we well as the committee were talking about that but because it wasn't you know it was um, two two members of the town board not entire town board right. i didn't know if they were still going to be asking us for this money but <coughs> it's a break even on the little lake parade for sure right in fact might be a little more for the village 
and because the village has always subsidized the barriers and the mm -hmm. cones and all of that for parades, and we have not asked the town to pay half. Pay half for that, right. So we consider some of this um, expenditure a break even. We are meeting next Tuesday for an, a second meeting because what became very clear to all of us is that the process itself needs a lot of cleanup. Right. And, and wasn't even being followed and the, as the it process was when we first that got, we got have elected. in place isn't even being followed. And we're gonna try and really do a big thing and that is differentiate between parades and, and events. events. Which has never been differentiated before. So whether we end up with two applications, you want a parade that's one component that might involve police over time, but then you end up with an event, such as the Little League has an event on Hashbrook Field, the Regatta has an event down at Sojourner. Yeah. But, but that is a separate thing from they the parade itself, which thing. is the part that shuts down the and street the organization and organization we're hoping <coughs> to recommend, although we haven't finalized, the, the event part is, should be a cost assumed by the organization that's having the event. Right. So that's where we are, an update. Yeah. Don't and hold me to this. It's right. not <laughs> final yet. Well, and another thing that we differentiated but, between was the idea that what, what, do we, what is considered a community parade versus parades that are basically coming into our community. And there's, there's, were some very obvious ones that are our community's events and that are not from the outside. And I think we, we didn't come to conclusions Which on all like, of those yet, but like things like the Memorial Day Parade, the Halloween Parade, things that are obviously done by people in our community for and that people, in, for our people community. in our community are mostly attended by people who live here. So and I think that that's, that's the big We made very good progress in our first meeting Yes. Clarified an awful lot of confusion on both sides of the aisle. I'm very optimistic. We will be coming with a very, very good recommendation to both boards on a nice way of doing this very efficiently. Yeah. Sounds great. And that's so, that. That's where we are. You want to approve the little league? Great. We already did. Didn't we? No. 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 We just approved it on the agenda. Oh, right. Well, no, let's just do, let's go in order, because okay. no one's here waiting What order do you want to go? Well, the next thing is uh, get Nancy on, uh, talk about the budget. That's okay, you can finish. Thanks. No, no, no one else is here for anything else but the budget. Well, well so. Kirk is also here for the budget talk, so. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. No one is here for waiting for the delete. Right. So, um, all right, where do, I do want to make one note in that uh, I don't believe at our meeting last week that there was any votes on... Good night. No. Because, so, I because I know there was something that I disagreed with, so these, I just want to make sure that these were not consensus agreed upon changes that were... No, we have to vote on them. No, it's just the list of things that we all agree on. Okay, that's, that's, okay, good. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So these are discussion items, not things we've already agreed to. Right, right. No, okay, but, good. but the first one has been already... Oh, no, many of them have been. There's a couple of consensus ones, and, and I guess... Well, is there any... Is there, is there any questions for Nancy, just to make sure, off the top? Okay, should we, and I thought maybe a good place to start might be to, to pull out all the consensus changes, so we at least know what's then is up a smaller list up for discussion. Does that seem mm -hmm. okay. fair? Well, the sure. first one okay. we well, need to remove um, all together. Wait, wait, hold on, Sarah. Hold on. Well, I was kind of thinking maybe we could talk to Kurt, because um, we could get him out of I mean, like... Uh, oh, you mean about the, well, he's waiting for an executive session discussion afterwards anyway. Aside so, from what we have to talk about, budgetary? Yeah. budgetary? Yeah, uh, no, the budgetary one. Yeah, I, I was waiting for the executive de executive um, session Actually, discussion. But that would be done in the current year, so not I mean, we, year we could bring Nancy in too for it, if, if that that's makes true. sense. Yeah. But I think it does. You want to do that now? Should we do that first? I, th I think so. Okay. I, mean, I think that would be a good way to go and then, you know. Okay. Right? Sure. Everyone, yeah, that makes sense. So I'll make a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, personnel matters. Yeah. 
and bu- a particular area. Okay. And budgetary and budgetary matters relating to personnel. That would be the thing I said. No, I said phrase. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, and Aye. that um, our treasurer and yeah. director of planning. So, Eileen, we'll uh, be back in a minute. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, let me call my hand. Ready? I move we uh, adopt the uh, consent agenda. So moved. The second. All in favor? Yeah, I, I did give my changes to the yep. to minutes to the clerk. So. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Four, uh, nay. 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 Okay. Okay. Fourteen um, is table till the next meeting. I didn't have a resolution in time. Um, I move we uh, adopt the resolution appointing election inspectors. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hold on, phone. Uh, <laughs> what was that? You did it for so many years. I you would like to one. amend that Kelly Stangle be employed to assist the clerk. So amended. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I move we adopt, approve the Little League Parade. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I thought it was just going to be a habit. No. Um, now I have parking changes and zoning draft, but I, I, I'll move I've it. forgotten what we did, we're supposed to be doing. We're here. doing the, the, the meters and the long term. This is not Maurice's book. Right. So number four is, uh, all right, so uh, I'll second on any discussion. I don't think we should be raising more rates. You want to respond to that? You wrote it. What? I said I don't think we should be raising the rates down to We've discussed this so many times, just vote no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to vote no. Right. I haven't discussed it that many times. Any, discu- any other discussion? Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Rip off, no. Rip off, no. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't even drive. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I can't, what, what are we doing about zone definitions? I'm baffled. Why yeah, we can't, we're not we can't, doing anything. We can't, can't vote on them tonight anyway. We can't vote on oh, it. Well, okay, I must have just written what down the wrong place. What we need to do is set the hearing for the B3. We don't no, have the no, draft we, law we yet. Can't, we're not doing that tonight. We are not setting the hearing? No. Nope. No. We can't. We don't, we don't have everything we need. We don't know what we're voting on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was not. a mistake we all made. All right, is there anything else that I missed, Kitty? Nope. All right. Anything? The, wait, minimum residential street parking requirements? Hmm? The minimum... This should probably say non-residential, but it says minimum residential off-street parking requirements. That's the, one of the ones we can't do until next no. week because of the, the, the timetable for review uh, comments by the uh, 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 uh. We could close the public hearing, we just can't vote until it, the, right. the, well, the clock ran out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's true of zoning definitions. Yes, too. that as well, yeah. But those well, zoning need, definitions, oh, that's we what we need oh, to do. Oh, yes. So I move right. to direct well, I should do it the planner to you want to you do it you want to because move? It, it was my suggestion to okay go oh uh, go oh uh, uh, we we have a time we have a bit of time that we should 11 o'clock 11 o'clock for restaurants does that make sense for restaurants midnight. Hmm? midnight midnight all right midnight's fine midnight right i think it's a nice even number okay okay, okay. i mean that seems that seems fair to me so um, I direct. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to. Is it direct? Or not really supposed to be directed to people. Right? I mean, direct. Whatever. Okay. We'll direct. Okay. To direct the village planner to uh, amend the proposed zoning code definition right. of restaurant to add that must close by twelve. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And as per discussed. As per discussed uh, with the village board trustees. And to tighten up the. <laughs> and okay, well. Tighten we, up the controls on special use permits. <laughs> no, so we, you can't, we can't have paragraph long motions. One sentence should cover it all. What, what's the? We're gonna have we're gonna have to speak with him about that because I don't know if just tighten up is we should actually sit down and have a discussion with him you and I. Why don't we? Have, what about requesting a, a new draft yeah, definition just based just on the conversation with the trustees? Oh, no, you don't need that's to. That's too broad. Cause, cause, don't want that. Okay, I think we should talk to him and then we'll come back to the next one. We'll we'll have a discussion with him regarding the. So don't make a motion, but talk about it. We're gonna we'll next go week after you guys get more information. Right. Okay. 
So no, are that. you withdrawing your motion? No, no, no. This this motion is going to go that through. That motion. Okay. But the other thing, we'll go talk to him, and then we'll come up with another motion for the next meeting. For the, right. for the special meeting. So right. I'll second your motion. Okay, so just, do you mind reading that back Easy. to me? Or, okay. hmm? Is it easy? I have yeah, I didn't realize that. that you're moving to direct the board to <coughs> amend the uh, proposed zoning for definitions that a restaurant must close by 12 p.m. as discussed by the village board. Seconded by Sally. Okay. Is that not correct? No, that's correct. Okay. That's good. Uh, any discussion? Or, 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 uh, sorry. Do we have, um, I'm not talking about bars now, but do we have restaurants that stay open later than that now? We don't, do we? What? Stay open later than midnight. It depends on the definition of restaurant. Yeah, well, it's a, yeah. If it, uh, otherwise, it'd be like a restaurant bar or a bar. Yeah, I understand, but that is primarily restaurants that are open at midnight. Not that I can. I mean, you can't even Except get food after ten p.m. Yeah, diners or pizzeria. Yeah. Um. Yeah, is a pizzeria. No, they don't serve alcohol. I guess it's a beer. Alright, we'll get it straight now. Should we add right. or should we just remove the motion? What? Should we withdraw the motion or should we just go through the whole? I now... think he understood what was okay. supposed to do. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's vote All on it. All in right. favor? Aye. Aye. I move. I put, wait, wait. Wait. You gotta finish voting. Um, are you right. voting on this? Yes or no? I did, yeah. Okay. Stuart? Okay. You got everybody? Okay. 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 <laughs> and, and if we have any problems with it, we'll come back and we'll look into it more before. Exactly. Yeah. What was your motion, Scott? What's Holly's last name? Esposito. I move that we appoint Holly Esposito to a three-month provisional appointment as code enforcer for the village of Newports with a performance review and recommendation <coughs> for continuance prior to the end of the three-month <coughs> provisional appointment at a salary of $21 per hour. Um, I'll second that. All right. Uh, um, the one minor technical change is it's code enforcement officer. Is it full said. title? No, you said code enforcer. Code enforcer. Oh, <laughs> just a it's just the code enforcer. Yeah. I like code enforcer. All right. Any other dis- yeah, no. Do, Any I other discussion? Wanna, yeah, I just want to make sure that one's verbatim. I'm actually going to have to take it off the tape to make sure it's absolutely perfect. So, okay. Yeah. What? You, why don't we do it right here? Yeah. Bring it back and we'll. Yeah. Um, uh, that's how we moved to appoint Holly Esposito. To a three months, uh, to a three month provisionary position as the code enforcement officer. Provisional, provisional. Um, at which a three month, uh, before the three months is over, a performance review will be done at the rate of twenty one dollars per hour. Uh, so we pay the rate of twenty one dollars. The performance review will be free. No, literally, read, read the last phrase back. Yeah. Okay. A performance review that would be done at the rate of twenty one dollars per hour. What? Do not accept that friendly amendment. No. Um, uh, yeah. Just the grammar was bad. That sounds right. All right, is that it? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all so much for staying so late.